<laughs> Episode 30, Knock Off Nation. Here made it. For a little Friday night, uh, Friday night session, Knock Off regulars, Danny and Chris on deck. Guest tonight, uh, Josie, welcome, my friend. How are you, lads? Good Dr- to have you on, brother. Thanks for having me, mate. Yeah. Thanks, for dedica- thanks very much off the top for dedicating your time here, man. Uh, the whole time we've networked with you through, uh, we met Josie through Instagram, of all places, just follow for follow. Slid yeah. into his DM straight up, and it's been nothing but good vibes and shit from <laughs> from it, the outset yeah. too, man. So we appreciate you taking your time out of your Friday night to oh, come here sure, and fucking mate. chill with us. But yeah. for the listeners at home, Josie's a, a lifelong martial artist. He's dabbled in a bunch of footy and shit as well. So going to start on the journey, but uh, he's actually just come straight from training. How was the session? Yeah, good, mate. We uh, I've, I'm at a new club now, so I'm training at a place called Elite uh, Elite Kickboxing at Rothwell, and um, after having a little bit of time off training by myself I sort of wanted to go back to a club and uh, I'd been in and out two mindsets of going back to compete you know I've been a martial artist my entire life and I was like well I'm getting to a level now where I really want to test it out and you can only spar so much you can only train so much so many things to know if it's actually going to work Mm. so you sort of got to put yourself I guess in a situation where you're against other people that are competing at a high level as well to really see if you are where you think you are Mm. So I, I, it's sort of like calling yourself on yourself. So like yeah. if you learn something in martial arts and you think, oh, I've got this, um, you can't really know until you put it in play. Mm. And sparring is still never a fight. You sort of got to put yourself in the environment. You got to put yourself around the people and the training. So mm. I was always in two minds about that because I always just was always just going to dedicate myself to no matter what martial arts forever. Mm. What, what age did you kick it off, man? What age did you start? L- literally two. Two, so my, two. Um, Your old man was into it or something, obviously. No, my mother. Ah, um, just get you up on that mic there, Josie. Just how's that? Yeah, that's, boom, doll. Sorry, guys. That's chocolate right there. I feel yeah. like I'm on a dick. <laughs> 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 I was a little bit scared at first, but we're all grabbing onto that's it. That's right, buddy. That's yeah. right. Black mic too. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be a long night. <laughs> Uh, shit. Oh, yeah, shit, two years old, man. Though that's yeah, uh, that's so crazy. I, my uh, my mother's a black belt um, in the same style that I grew up in, and then she was also like a brown belt in Zendu Kai, which is a very reputable yeah, martial shit. art here in uh, in the eighties and nineties. Um, Far out. So she, you know, she's a bad motherfucker, man. Yeah, so I, I was yeah. in dojos from when I was um, like when I was born. You know, I was always in and out, so I was around it. It was just natural, right. um, you know. From the age of two, there's a photo of me from the age of two. I'll, sit, I'll actually try and find it for you. Yeah. Um, I've got the gloves on, just sparring uh, my uncle. Really? Yeah, yeah. I was just, from when I was a kid, like, literally is all I wanted to do was fight. And yeah. so um, I think I was just naturally, my mother's pretty full on. Like, yeah. Full, and my father's pretty full on as well. Fuck, they would have thrown down, bro. I don't re- yeah, well, they didn't <laughs> last. So, oh, um, right, yeah. so they split when I was young. But I didn't have any chance of being a fucking chilled out personality. Right. Which is why I smoke a little bit of weed every now and then. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just to keep me chilled. A lot of fire. Yeah, yeah. 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 There's a lot the of fire. Pool, yeah. yeah. So like, and, and I'm I'm aware of how DNA works. So I know mm. that there's just things that like I'm short tempered. I'm naturally short tempered. Yeah. yeah. So if I harness it into some yeah. form of, of training. So mum knew that from very young. Yeah. So I just took to it like that. And um, I was obsessed with Ninja Turtles. Like the first mm. ever movie I went to was Ninja Turtles. Yeah. No. Chris was uh, right into Ninja Turtles Absolutely. as well. Eh? Yeah, I dug Ninja Turtles. I'm still into it, man. <laughs> I'll go and watch those Did you have a favourite? Uh, Raphael. Raphael. No, I, I liked Michelangelo. Is he everybody's favourite? Raphael's the purple with the stick? That's no, Donatello. Yeah. That's, that's Donatello. the red one. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Raphael's the red oh, one. Oh, shit. Red one. Raphael yeah, with the swords? Uh, the size. Fuck, I'm all, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm all uh, fucked yeah. up, man. <laughs> 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 Literally got every yeah. turtle wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, Donatello. I don't know, guy. <laughs> that was Splinter, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was the fish, yeah? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> oh, that's so funny. But, so, yeah, man. but look, it is it is fairly common for you know among or at least you know I have no affiliation with it other than being a fan myself. But it is interesting that martial artists in general tend to gravitate towards types of sports like that where they can harness that type of yeah. energy that you were talking about yeah, before. Of course, I think it's um people learn for different reasons. When I was that young, I did it because my mother did it. And like I wanted to do it and um, she encouraged it, but she never pushed anything on me. As I got older, because I was in a strong personality, I was very outgoing, um, I wouldn't take any shit, but that actually opened me up to a lot of bullying because I was younger. 
I wouldn't back away from a fight. Mm. You know, even if I get my ass kicked, I just couldn't back away from yeah. a fight. Yeah. So I was always getting smashed by older fellas in, um, in primary school and high school. I sort of learnt. I got my black belt when I was 14. So high school, Fuck. I started to figure shit out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I started to figure shit out Didn't quick. Didn't get bullied no more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Funnily yeah. enough. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't happen as much. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, and, and the, but the good thing about that is um, my younger years, I was always fighting. I was always in trouble. I was, I was fighting a lot because I was just a little uh, aggressive kid. But when I got into my teenage years, I had a couple of big scares Um you know, had knives put on me at school and all this. Really? Shit. Yeah, I had some runs. What, what some school did you? Oh, I went to Wavell. Yeah. I went to Wavell Heights. Oh, oh right. Yeah. Pre- yeah. Pre- Shout out the Julia Street Studios. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> Premier. Wavell. <laughs> Soldier. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag. <laughs> Premier, Premier Rugby League School. Yeah, here oh, in absolutely. Brisbane. To all yeah. our international fans, yeah. that's yeah. A, uh, <laughs> a small neighbourhood in uh, Brisbane City, Australia. Yeah. <laughs> So people pulling knives on you at school? Yeah, man. I was. Uh, it was actually my first. It was my first day of uh, at Wavell. Um, I'd come from Fernie Grove, and I'd got disenrolled. So um, <laughs> I didn't get expelled because yeah, asked uh, to leave type thing. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. if you get expelled, you can't go to other schools. To yeah, exactly. Schools, but they didn't want me to come back. Um, so <laughs> so mum, yeah. uh, all rightly so though. So I was always taught growing up. Mum was very, very like she never told me to ever not defend myself. Mm. Being a martial artist, she goes, if anyone ever picks you, you if you can get yourself home, get yourself home. Yeah, mm. like, no matter what, I don't. I will never get angry at you for that. She goes, I'll kick your ass if you ever start a fight. Yeah, yeah, so right. I never start. Good fights. mentality. Yeah, that's Self-defense. a real good yeah. mentality. Yeah, I never started fights. But also, she also taught me if someone else was in trouble, you help them. Mm. No matter what, if you can, you help them. So I had that mentality too. Mm. And my mate got um, was, I went to Fernie Grove High, so year eight and start of year nine, I went to Fernie Grove High School. And um, at the time, it was it was uh, year, the start of year nine, and a mate of mine got his ass kicked by a year twelver. And the guy was huge, like mm. he was a basketball dude. So he's like he was a big guy, mm. and kicked the shit out of my mate. And my mate was just a is just a geeky dude. With a little bit of attitude, but it wasn't worth the beating that he got. Right, should just mm. give him a backhand or something. Yeah, Don't be a dickhead. Yeah. Like he got flogged, flogged, and um, I found out about it like mid, like mid of the day. I'm thinking. I still remember this dude's dude named Ethan. So if you ever mm. listen to this man, I fucking mm. still got you. <laughs> I got you good, man. I, I, I stomped your ass. <laughs> 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 Yeah, no, I um, guaranteed he's going to hear it now. This yeah. shit's going viral. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so yeah, this dude um, kicked the shit out of a mate of mine, and I was just sitting on it all day. And I knew that he had to go home. He ended up going to hospital actually. Oh, he so really got his ass whooped. Yeah. So um, the the that day, the Ethan dude didn't even get kicked out of school. So I'm thinking, what the fuck? I would have thought he, the guy would have definitely got in trouble. Mm. Like if you flog someone that bad, but apparently it happened before school. And no one knew about it and it was uh, up yeah. to the parents or some shit to sort it out. And that wasn't going to happen. Mm. So I was like, oh, fuck this. So I'm sitting there all day just brewing on this, just like steaming. And I couldn't concentrate. All I wanted to do at the end of the day was find this Ethan dude and flog him. Mm. But I was a cocky little Yunana who was, I was skinny, man. I was lanky. So, you know, this guy was pretty big. So I'm thinking, oh, I could probably get my ass kicked here, but. I'm still going to have a crack. Yeah. Because like, you've I'm, got I, that martial arts knowledge behind you too. Yeah, so I'll have you're a crack. confident. Yeah. Worst, worst case scenario, you get an ass kicked as a year 12. Where you, don't get, yeah. you don't lose too much like yeah. reputation, you know what I mean? Yeah. But I met him at the fr- uh, front of the school and I just charged him. I just took him down and started flogging this guy. Took him down? Like, yeah, well, it was like a footy tackle. Right. Even I, with your, like your striking background. No, you I just tackled him. him. It was just like right. adrenaline at it that was age. Adrenaline. Yeah. 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 Like yeah. I knew so much, so many striking, but I just tackled the dude on top of him. It was just natural because of footy. Yeah. Um, and some people do. That was like my first big. It was like my first big fight. Yeah. Like it was always. Tra- it was nothing really that bad. It was Heaps of cats there to watch it. Uh, like, it, what, it, did it, you what? publicise it throughout the school? No, I, nah, see, I didn't tell anyone because like, yeah, right, I was right, brewing on it. Right. Yeah. But it yeah. was out where the bu- the the bus leaves in the afternoon, so there was three buses there, and it was like it was busy. Mm. But. It, I was probably stupid to do it there, but I, I, like, I could not think. <laughs> yeah. I, just no, that's to, it. Yeah, I just had just to tackle the dude. That's where he was. Hooked, hooked on that idea of payback, yeah. Yeah, that's all I wanted to do. And then I ended up having a few. He got a few on me and I just stood up and cracked him. 
I ended up breaking his jaw. Ooh, like he had to, yeah. you know, the poor dude had to get it wired and shit like that. Wow. So that obviously escalated. And so the next day, the principal and fucking all that sort of stuff. Yeah. 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 So I got caught in and then mum came down. I told mum what happened and um, she was like, good. I remember I was literally, I was at the, the, they were at the desk and the principal was like, you know, you know, Josie's done this. And she was like, good. Why wasn't that kid suspended for beating up a year niner? Ah, uh, mm. she backed you. Mm. Yeah. Parents do. Yeah, parents she always, do. She always back. Absolutely, me. man. I can remember like my parents going to bat for me, like not not in any serious shit, but but always going for bat for me for at schools and stuff like that. When you know you, they probably knew you were in the wrong, but they know you in a different context. Yeah, then, you know? different they, they sort know of, you from home, and, and she sort of know, knew that. Yeah, she taught me that exactly. So she was yeah. she was not gonna mm. yeah she was not gonna really have a go at me. Yeah, the, of course. The weird thing is, is that like especially in high school. Your parents really don't have any clue of, or don't have much of a clue of what kind of kid you are at school anyway. Nah, no, no. way. <laughs> yeah. No way, bro. And, and, and like, if ever anybody's going to see you with rose coloured glasses, it's your, exactly. it's your parents. Mum and dad. So you parent, could be the yeah. biggest little shit <laughs> yeah, ever, yeah. like, oh, he's a good boy. Like, yeah, that's my boy. Good yeah. boy, yeah. my yeah. boy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you like dogs. <laughs> He's my boy. So, so the first martial art, like you, you, you mentioned, it started out what around karate was it? I uh, know when I, I was I was that young, so I'd been doing it at home with mum from like when I literally was two. Course, so yeah. um, till I got to about I think I was four or five years old, she threw me in judo. Judo, um, nice. Just Far so out. I could learn how to roll and fall and things yeah, like that. It wasn't and... really for too much grappling at the time. It was to learn how to roll and just. To get your body moving mm. um, And then I sort of got tired with that And I wanted to do something more Like I still wanted to hit people mm. um, So karate was the sort of first little thing I did And then I outgrew that pretty quick And went to a style called Toribushido And that's like a Japanese freestyle karate oh, nice. And um, it's pre- it was pretty crazy man I was very lucky The guy, my instructor, uh, Richard Thomas Who's a half Japanese, half American uh, dude He was really intense, he was jacked um, and now I look back like he was proper jacked. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, like, but at the time, I had no idea yeah, about yeah. what the fuck was going on. Jesus, guy, <laughs> it must eat healthy. This guy yeah. is so muscly. <laughs> <laughs> he was like sixteen. He was like <laughs> fucking shredded. I'm like, this guy's a beast. <laughs> and so I grew up like just wanting to be him. Yeah. And he was, uh, he was so he's half American, half Japanese. Um, he had a traditional sort of Japanese martial art background, but also a kickboxer. He was like a professional kickboxer. Oh, nice. So I think he came, he came out of Australia and he sort of formed his own style. Um, so it was really, really cool. It was almost like I was uh, five or six at the time. So was he was a UFC around then? I'm, I'm 29 now. Yeah, 90, 93. So you bang on basically. Yeah, bang yeah. on, yeah. Yep. So at the time, it was a very early style of mixed martial arts yeah. but it wasn't the we didn't have the grappling aspect of it yeah we had boxing kickboxing karate we used to do karate karters obviously to learn the forms and traditionality we used to meditate before class so he he still had that traditional element but he liked to stand as a kickboxer and punch boxing style because he thought it was more relevant mm-hmm. um and japanese jiu-jitsu was a standing jiu-jitsu so a lot of grappling standing right yeah. a lot of sort of take like sort of um, wrist locks and sort of taking them to the ground and oh. stuff like that and a lot of weapons and things like that and we sparred like you, know, you would normally spar right so he had he had like a mixed style he was his own thing yeah and with, um, with headgear on yeah yeah we'd, yeah, we'd spar, yeah, but yeah, like, yeah. He, it, like we would spar <laughs> like you were um you know we ended like points tournaments and the way he trained us we they entered us into a tournament at carrara stadium mm. and it was um it was a free. It was the freestyle world championship of martial arts, and um, I would have been eleven or twelve, and we he took our school there, right? And so, like, you had these crazy fucking demos. You know, they do the weapons card as well. Right, yeah, so there was yeah, that yeah. stuff, and then there was full contact, and then there was points. So at the time, he entered us in points. Um, and explain it to the listeners like the difference between combat karate and, and points karate. So points karate is the one they do in the Olympics, yeah? Yeah, and they pull the punch from yeah, the head. Yeah. So um, you can hit, you can strike. Explain, yeah, the in you can strike in point karate. Yeah, yeah like so you can throw kicks but you, 
they you can't go full force. They're pulled. Mm. It's pulled punches and pulled kicks. So there's still contact, but it's not. Yeah, it's not full contact kicking the shit out of each other, mm. right? And when you get a clean strike, the referee stops it. Yeah. So the yep, referee stop, comes in and says, "Right, yeah. that's a that's a point." Yep. Yeah. 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 So um, so but because we've come, you know, so you're versing a lot of karate and taekwondo, and we verse kung fu and all these different styles. Um, because he taught us kickboxing like properly how to how to throw and kick. Um, all of our guys got disqualified. Even in the full contact tournament, the older guys were just fucking dudes up, and they were just, <laughs> yeah. like, were just smashing them. And um, I was coming first in the World Cup, like in my whole division, I was coming first out of people all around the all our globe, different countries. Nice. I was kicking ass, but then I come up against this big redhead dude, and he was from um, which from where I don't remember. Right, I don't remember, and um, he was being really rough with me, and they weren't. Pulling it up, yeah. And so um, the first round, he got me because he was like taller, and he did this sort of hammer on the top of my head. It wasn't even really a punch. Jeez, and I was like looking at him, going, the "Fuck is that?" Twelve six elbows. Yeah, yeah. It was like, <laughs> like, <laughs> like, it was, that was. It was like a lap. It's like a, a crow, yeah. crow pack. Yeah. It was almost yeah, like a hammer fist, hammer but fist, like front yeah. on. Wow. And um, there he was scoring points on it. I'm right. thinking that's not even. He's not even hitting me. Yeah, that's what's fucked about. And that so system, yeah. my trainer was just like, just my trainer was like, just give him one. Just put it on him. Like, see what happens. I was like, am I allowed? And he goes, just do it. <laughs> <laughs> so, Dunk. like, we went out there and I'm just like, bang, just started kicking the shit out of this kid and, like, punching him in the head. Boom, dropped him. <laughs> hit him in the groin like a groin <laughs> shot. <laughs> so, he's <laughs> dropped. Like, he's full dropped. pride at <laughs> Carrara yeah, Stadium. Yeah, yeah. Fucking, yeah. like... Soccer kicks yeah. him and it's shit pride, on the ground. Yeah, pride like, never <laughs> dies. <Yeah. laughs> Bunch of kids doing pride rules at fucking Carrara. I lost it, man. Uh, I was coming first. They disqualified me for that fight. Far out. So, I got disqualified because I beat the shit out yeah. of this big redhead kid. And uh, dropped me down two positions, so I finished third. Right. Just because of that. If that didn't happen, I would have finished first. DQ. Right. But the DQ was worth it because um, my my aunt sensei just looked at me afterwards and he was like, <laughs> <laughs> he just nodded like it was the coolest thing he's ever seen. Yeah. <laughs> you just like, got a stripe, dog. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's like, you aren't your stripe. <laughs> so there was one of my moments where I was like, fuck competing. Like I can bang. Like yeah. it was like, I don't need yeah. to compete. Yeah. Right. So exactly. he always taught us. You don't need to go to competition. Mm. So that's why I never had a crazy extensive fight career. Yeah. I had a few amateurs, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I was, I had a competitive streak, but under him, he was just like, just remind people when you have to. Yeah. Don't do it. Don't ever do it when you don't need to. But he goes, that was a moment that you had to do it. Yeah, no. So they got, we got asked to never come back. (laughs) <laughs> so, <laughs> so our whole, our whole. Um, so that was really yeah. frowned upon, like uh, yeah. uh, um, amongst it, the yeah. like the tournament that yeah, you were at. Yeah, because it's so it's it was so technical and the points is yeah. It's so it's so lardy da that he fucking hated it. He <laughs> and you've just, come out throwing grind strikes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> As soon as he said that, I was like in my head to the death. Put, like, puts, him, yeah. put, puts him in yeah. the... I'm an cl- 11-year-old. Let's go to death. <laughs> yeah. Puts him in the clinch and just starts blasting these on him like <laughs> Anderson Silva, Rich Franklin spec. Oh. I'm seeing a theme here with getting asked to leave, but like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they don't call me the outlaw. Uh, yeah, fuck yeah. That's awesome. So th- that style of karate, is it still... Is it very similar to sort of, the, I guess, the traditional style of karate with the... The Stephen Wonderboy, Leota Machida yeah, sort of sideways yes. stance yeah, sort of so thing. Like. I still have my karate stance now. Right. I still stand and move in and out like that. So it's, it's you a southpaw or no? I fight yeah. both. Nice. So right. um, my mum actually taught me from a young age: if you learn how to fight one way, learn how to fight the other way. She just taught me that, ah. and so she forced me. And I actually remember the training sessions on the house, on the bags. I'd come out and I'd be kicking. Um, because I was originally because I'm right handed so originally I was an orthodox right Mm -hmm. so I'd always kick and she'd come down and tell me other side and she'd keep other side practice the other way yeah and so for years it was that so now I'm Efficient on both ways, and yeah. I have sort of different weapons that I use on different sides. Footy players that have to be the same way, surely at some point. Because I mean, I know I can only kick off my right foot. Like if I try and kick off my left foot, I'm a fucking spaz. But even with tackling be, with shoulders too, like you need yeah. to be able to tackle off your left. Yeah, and right that's true. Too. But you'd be that's surprised true. how many don't. Mm, really, you'd be surprised mm, how really? many don't. Yeah, like um, 
I'd say most of the efficient halves these days would be pretty good on both sides. Yeah. Mm. Um, yeah. And now that sports science has evolved so much, people are getting a little more functional and a little bit more well balanced. Mm. But when I was growing up playing footy, it was like, you know, yeah, you had a good right foot. Yeah. Mm. You know, you'd kick it. You wouldn't risk it in a high, high stakes game just throwing that fucking left one in there. <laughs> That's yeah. true. You know what I mean? That's yeah. true. You wouldn't really risk it. You're, not, you're not Joey Johns. You know, nah, nah. fucking... you know you're not Joey Johns. <laughs> don't you, you dare. Yeah. Yeah. Don't you <laughs> fucking dare. Left foot fit pick up, right hand slip. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't even let it play out in your head. <laughs> <laughs> we got far too much riding when you're being dumb, man. How many um, WSL surfers do you reckon can, can surf both ways? Switch then. Switch for That's actually a question I've never... That's something I've actually all, never thought about. All of them would be able to do it. Some can do it better than others. Yeah. But they're I've so balanced, mate. To do it. I've like seen Kelly do it load, at yeah. pipe. Man. <laughs> like, at pipe. And if you can do it at pipe, you know, like, that shows a lot of merit in terms of your surfing. And, and really... There is no greater athlete. I heard. I heard <laughs> he was like fucking because yeah, I'm a I'm a big Kelly Slater fan. Mm, me too. I heard that he was like a proper yogi. Like he was a he's a full yoga dude. Yeah, that's I, why he's like. I heard he was like. That's why he's balanced and everything's so crazy. He's like yeah. a full fucking crazy True. yoga master. He's really into his healthy eating and stuff like that oh, too. I follow and him has been at it for a long time now too. Yeah. Like it, with yeah. social media and things like that, now we get an insight into it. But he's been living that way for a fucking long time. Exactly. Now. He's a, that, um, so. If you do follow him on social media, he's a down to earth motherfucker. He's responding mm. to people in his comment yeah, section and he shit. Does. Yeah. Well. Really? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I like yeah. that. Yeah. He's off yeah, a. Uh, I like that. It's off a scratch handicap in golf as well. Like he's a yeah, right. like yeah. Do, you he's could turn co- do you reckon he's got a cock on him as well? Because everything oh, he's got everything going <laughs> for him. He slayed Pamela Anderson. Anderson. He's been yeah. with Pamela yeah. Anderson, yeah. so yeah. say no more. Yes, say no more. Yeah. Fucking a, especially uh, after Tommy Lee. Yeah, yeah. 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 for sure. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, would, know, you know what did, she's into? Like did you, yeah, yeah. yeah. After Tommy Lee, you wouldn't even throw your hat in the ring unless you had a horse. Do you know who she's with now? Pamela. Yeah. No, Julian Assange. She's no, I saw her really? go to visit. Actually, what? Look it up. Look it up. No, look wow. it up. No. She's she's been visiting him in um in the detention or whatever that he's in. Been bringing oh, him shit. Yeah. Some reptilian she, shit. I'll bring her. <laughs> she, <laughs> oh, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> she, Man, she went um she went full depression suicide like she, and wrote a book I think just you know in recent times about how she was raped and, really? and all this sort of stuff. Well, she's she's had a, was a poor young, things young had pretty fun. She got Hep C too. The book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She, yeah. And it was it was just. Life in the fast lane for Pamela Anderson. Imagine yeah. being her in peak Baywatch, like CJ, dude, Hunt, CJ, or dude, uh, Baywatch. Dude, Pamela Anderson. I'm sorry, in her prime. Oh, absolutely. Is still probably the goat, best yeah. looking goat. Yeah, she's yeah. on my round, yeah. Mount Rushmore. Yeah. Yeah. She's, she's on my Mount Rushmore. She's right. goat. Her Definitely ba- a goat. Her Baywatch days. There you go. Oh, Man, I'll tell you incredible. a story. I used to live in uh, Pamela Anderson is being coy about a rumored romance with WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange, saying. His being holed up in an Ecuadorian embassy in London may, made dating a little bit difficult. So <laughs> just a tad. She's awesome. she's a real like um Look she's a real do gooder type as well. She's real active for yeah, for yeah. the Peter, Peter yeah. organization and stuff. And so. she's fucking gold for not wearing a bra. <laughs> <laughs> for everyone, how old, the, that. How old is she now, <laughs> yeah. man? Because I ain't mad at that at all. The picture no. we're looking at it, it just shows, 40s, 50s. shows her and it looks cold. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's a few previous, uh, uh, so yeah. How grubby does he look? Though? Oh, mate. Mm. Oh, how Tommy Lee. Does he look? Yeah, mate. Um, that's that's fame. If for you him. ever read the Dirt, which is the Motley Crue autobiography, and it's told from like basically this the story of the band told from the perspective of all the different members. Man, those those days were like you know the definition of when people were talking about sex, drugs, and rock and roll. That was like that was them before camera phone fucking era. You know what I mean? Just yeah, <laughs> fuck. Yeah, she's loose going on tour with Black Sabbath and shit. Apparently, oh. Ozzy Osbourne in the book they reckon that he just decided one day woke up and, uh, to see what would happen if he took acid every day for a year, oh. and uh, and that's you know the Ozzy that you have now. Yeah. Well, cl- well, clearly, yeah, that's yeah. what happens. You did something. That's yeah. what happens. Yeah. Science. That's science. <laughs> that's <for sure>. science <laughs> bitch. Dude, dudes, dudes like him and um, Keith Richards and stuff like that are really kind of like more. Medical miracles that they're still alive. To oh be yeah, Tammy's forty nine. Oh Jesus yeah, Christ. she's still forty nine. You mad. wouldn't kick her out of bed. No. Not at all. She's um she. They've obviously got good plastic surgeons. And, yeah, she does um, look stuff quite, like now. That she's in, quite in plastic. The go to go to Pamela Anderson. Um, Bay circa nineteen ninety seven. Yeah, yeah. nineteen ninety seven. Yeah, late nineties was definitely the Bay Watch era for sure. Did a bit of traveling. Went to uh went to live in Canada for sort of twelve eighteen months and um. 
Worked at Baby Gap over there, <laughs> working retail, man. <laughs> What's like, Baby Gap? You know, Gap, like the clothing what, brand. Yeah. I was at the Baby Gap, like the shop, man, just on cash register <laughs> and retail, like. Just What's the mate, money like over there? I've uh, always wanted mate, to go to it Canada. Was, uh, it was twelve twenty five an hour, which was oh. considered half, like half decent for like living yeah. in like Whistle Village where we were. But just sitting there on the uh, on the cash register all day, just fucking twelve twenty five an hour. So how much would you make a day? Uh, 36 but 3675 like doing 3 hour shifts like it's so brutal wow. on, so those, on those working holidays it's um yeah a pittance so when you um so oh, that's what yeah but 12 I was, bucks mm. so a lot How of the go, uh, i don't know what 25. year this is but oh yeah oh. Some jesus okay, yeah. in yeah. the darkness so, to yeah. go to lunch on one day, on one of my shifts there and there's like obviously Pamela being Canadian as well I walk back in and the pommy dude there was it was working there like shared shift He's like, you never, you never guess who you just missed. I was like, oh fuck, nah, who? Like, he goes, Pamela Anderson. I was like, you're fucking kidding me. What? He's like, true. hand on heart, man. Pamela oh. Anderson. The other people came out. The managers like, fucking Pamela. Oh, like, oh no. damn. So I would have oh, happily forfeited my job to just get my phone out of my pocket and be like, oh, seriously, yeah, yeah selfie. Definitely. I wouldn't. Yeah, I, d- I didn't sack I didn't, me from you know my twelve twenty five an hour, if you will. You know, it's interesting. If this were twenty seventeen. Would she need a giant ass to be uh, to be considered the? Nah, you know, nah, nah, there's nah. still enough out nah, there. Like, yeah. is that just my See, Instagram? Because that was feed, t- it, it was tits. <laughs> <laughs> it was tits then. Exactly, it was, it was right. titties. It, was, it wasn't, it wasn't ass. Yeah. It's ass now. Yeah, yeah. It, it was tits it then. It's weird how that changes. Yeah. Yeah. it's like a social thing. It's yeah. not she's, necessarily she's like pretty proportioned. Like, it doesn't doesn't look. Yeah, I'm mad at those uh, nah. those. Measurements at all? Yeah. <laughs> 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 Meanwhile, this podcast is just yeah, yeah, divulged into, into fucking porn. four dudes yeah. just looking at looking at fucking tits and yeah. ass. <laughs> Go into our uh, redshirt for a second. <laughs> 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 uh, you know, you know you where you got to get on. You know where you got to get on. <laughs> XNXX. Oh yeah, yeah. XNXX. Yeah. <laughs> Categories <laughs> list. <laughs> Uh, Shit, I've never even heard of. You'll find yourself just going down a dark path. (laughs) Yeah, what have I become? There's a lot of. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, there's a. um, I saw Joe Rogan do his stand up, and he's got a bit where it's like, no man ever, after fucking beating off to porn, is ever like. (laughs) Happy about what they've done. It's never like, yeah, I did did that shit. It's (laughs) always just like. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> where, where, where? Still am I doing at? this, hey? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's always that thing to just close it. It's like, nah, I'm out. I'm out. Like, where did I? Where did I end I'm, up I'm, when I know it's like? I'm closing out of browsers as yeah. I'm like. Do you know, you, <laughs> you know the rule of thumb finished. is like, oh, as really? soon as that finishes, close it, open it, clear history, close it. It's like an automatic thing. <laughs> like, no matter what, it's history gone. Yeah, it's history gone. <laughs> just Erased. Stocko routine, like close, wipe history. <laughs> Like, yeah, yeah. Some, sometimes I find myself just going, yeah, what the fuck is wrong with you now? I honestly think, I think we, um, you know, because of the internet and everything, like no, no generation before us has ever had exposure to such extreme sexual content like from us. such a young age. Yeah. So it's like, you know. Internet porn 13. Yeah, I was on it. Yeah, yeah you I know. was looking at it. And like and and access to some of the most hardcore shit going, so it's yeah. like you kind of you get in stuck in this place where it's kind of you got to make it new and interesting. So yeah. there's like that's why where you now you have it? like <laughs> categories for absolutely everything. There's a fetish that somebody has sexualized anything pretty much and out you know, there. And you know what? There never used to be. So when I was looking at porn at thirteen, it, magazines categ- and shit. No, no, I was on the internet. I because I was pretty I was pretty lucky I was set up with a computer pretty young yeah <laughs> so I was like fuck yeah I was one, I was one of the lucky ones that, that, I was a horny little fucker yeah but bro were you rolling on the fifty six k modem and like downloading it you know yeah so one three minute clip would Windo- take like Windows ninety minutes, minutes. Yeah. Yeah. and I'd have to rip it out in three minutes <laughs> or I'd have to reload it yeah there's no no just going back buffering, there's a yeah. prequel there's, you're sitting there for just warming it up <laughs> uh, I'll fast forward straight to the doggy bit like, <laughs> no, no, no. None of that. None not of that. a, sto- a, a storyline man. <laughs> I, I am now. I never used to be. Mm. I'm a storyline man through and through now. Really? I want to, I want to see. Yeah. The lead up. How the like fuck, the lead how up? Did, how yeah. does he get that? How does yeah, that happen? Yeah, like, true. How, how did, did you end up here? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Don't just jump straight into it because you're just like, oh, fuck, I got to warm up, man. <laughs> nah, I feel you. Yeah. I, feel I can. You. I can even shop around. 
five, six, seven different windows of like, nah, nah, I'm not ready to nut yet. I'll, I'll, <laughs> like, I'll, I'll go to something better than that. I can find something better than that. Mate, you know what I'll do? Like, I'll, I'll find, I'll, I'll pick four categories for my session, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, one, two, three, four categories, whatever. This is going to be the tagline on this episode. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Porn how-to. Yeah, that's it. So then you open the categories, right-click, open as many ones that you sort of go, oh, yeah, that one looks all right. Show some interest. Next category, close that one. And so you have a look through and then by the time you're sort of working your way through, you say, like, oh, yeah, I think I might have found one. <laughs> I'm ready to go. <laughs> and uh, then by the end of it, you're like, I just opened like fucking 30 categories and <laughs> You've obviously got unlimited Wi-Fi. <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> do, you reckon, do you reckon there's anybody out there that like puts a puts a porno DVD on and watches it from um, beginning to end? Does that, does that exist? There can't be. No. Nah. There can't be. Well, maybe Some a female, of... but men... We're no. not going to wait around for that long to, no, to nah, come. No. Although, bro, no I can, chance. I can Are you serious? <laughs> I can remember. I wasn't. I wasn't one of the lucky ones. Like we always had a VCR at our gaff. Oh and no! Yeah, so we were always no. sort of like bor- borrowing and lending tapes, like among mates and stuff like that. At um, at a high school level, big booty and, revenge. Yeah, that went around. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And I can I can remember probably like those videos. There would have been a time where I like sat down and watched a good like twenty minutes. You know. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Or more. Yeah. School holidays. You got nothing else going on. Why not chuck on black sorority girls? <laughs> 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 that was one of the ones that did our rounds, man. Or a similar title. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mate, I've actually tried to find that since those days too. It's nigh on impossible, I tell you. Like, do you want to know? Black do sorority do girls. Yeah, Never, yeah. I, I don't think I ever saw that one. My first ever porn video, and it was a cassette. I used to steal my stepdad's. Um, I fucking hope mum never hears this. <laughs> <laughs> um, Shout out Mrs. Josie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's called Airtight. <laughs> <laughs> First ever porno I'd properly seen, right, was a gangbang pretty much. Was the girl getting three fucking the air, she was airtight. <laughs> it's the first porn I've ever seen. So I was first thrown one. in the deep end. I wasn't right. it wasn't just like a little bit yeah. of titty and a little bit like I was like, all right, that's chicks getting taken yeah, from all like angles. What? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So my entry to my sexual life was um yeah, I was probably a little bit full on for my early girlfriends. Safe to say, yeah, and they say that that's really common these days. Mate, too. I've thought about exactly, it now. Man. I've yeah. thought about it. These yeah. young fellas are expecting the young girls to mate. be able to do this. Exactly, mate. yeah. It's Dude, not re- not well, reasonable. Now, do you know what's scarier? The young girls are doing it because they're, they're watching it too. Yeah, exactly. they're going, "Oh, guys want this." Dude, I'm, I'm yeah. seeing like eight, couple of 18, 19 year old boys that I work with that go out and they think the end of a successful date is anal. Like, you yeah. know, like, like I'm obviously going to fuck her, but will I get to do her in the ass? Like, Wait, yeah. sort of the come expectation. On, come on, is, yeah. is that a, is that a yeah. good is that a good life though? No, no, no. <laughs> no. Are, you, are you living it up? Yeah, <laughs> dead yeah. set. Like, but no, nah, it's 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 become a crazy thing. It man. is. Yeah, the, ex- the expectation that makes me worry about having fucking kids. Yeah, and if the female like the. I wonder if that sort of generation you'd pr- you'd have to ask them, but if they if they do feel any sort of pressure or expectation that that is deemed to see the norm, like that's a whole interesting thing of like I can a, give a you psyche. an honest answer to that. Um, I've had a lot, like I've had a pretty active sexual life. I'm real, I'm open about it. Yeah, um, same. I'm very like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> and have been on this podcast before. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, it, there's no point bullshitting like. People have sex, but yeah. just everyone's sort of introduced to it in a different and sometimes unique way. So, you know, I've spoken a lot of my exes about it and, yeah, they've sort of – a lot of girls now have like this inkling in their mind that are they expected to do that with their guy or for their first boyfriend? Mm-hmm. And if they don't do that, um, are, they a bad, is, are they a bad girlfriend? And the guys are unfortunately driven by testosterone, which we always are, but when you're a teenager, it's mm. fucking uncontrollable. It's a different story. It's a different story. So they're just thinking with that one thing. So they don't realise they're damaging these girls as much as they're damaging their own sex life. Yeah. Because when yeah. they actually meet a chick and go, what, I'm just going to fuck her. Or, hey, yeah. hold on, I may have a really decent... Exactly. Here. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. You haven't and thought I, that through properly. Yeah, And yeah. I found that I've done that. I found that I've done that. In I think everybody's done that at some yeah. stage. It, you that's just, part you, of being you a bloke. You expect too much, and then yeah. you go, "Oh, hold on, I actually had a pretty good chick," mm. and I fucked that one up. Everyone's got to true. Everyone's or true. You, yeah, right. you know, like I'm like my my issue when I was younger was playing up. It was just I wanted everything. 
that, help it's it. hard at that point, as you say, with that test just coursing around you. If you exactly. throw in some sort of like yeah. substance in there as well, and it's it, it's it's three a.m. up in a yeah. fucking D, yeah. D floor, and there's something there. Yeah. And yeah. and I try and look. The older I get now, the more I understand about our own biology. Exactly, it is I part of your biology. It, mm. We are driven from testosterone. Men mm. literally think we're yeah. dick. We have, we have <coughs> glands exactly. in here that yeah. are connected to our <laughs> pituitary. You know what I mean? Like, how it. good is it? Though? Yeah, <laughs> it's just how it is. but it's interesting, like we're like we're saying, because you know, there's there's a certain amount of, of it that is biological and it is natural, and then you add in this element this, of like, hey, these younger generations have been like sexualized from a really early age with visual content and shit. Yeah, I watched um fucking. If you haven't seen it, get amongst it. Porn it's ends. like Gringo. Um, I've, I've watched that this week. Doesn't too, that yeah. turn, don't yet? Don't that make you feel bad looking at porn? <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. Lisa, An- <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. Lisa or Ann at the start. One. Lisa Ann at the start, I thought spoke really eloquently and was like able to s- sort of really rationalise her career yeah, as a she's porn gold. star. Yeah, Lisa who? Um, Le- no, no. Lisa. <laughs> oh, you dare! How dare no, you? No, <laughs> Lisa. She was in the Eminem oh. film clip. She's like probably like like. Jenna no, she, Lisa Rand's the queen of porn. She's number one ranked on Red Shoe. Yeah. Bigger than Jenna? In ranking. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Number one She's ranked bigger than Jenna. Right, yeah. right. Really? Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. the one. John McAfee doco on Netflix at the moment, it's like Gringo, the John McAfee story or something like that. The guy who basically came up with McAfee antivirus software or whatever, but uh, he's an absolute like real strange, absent, uh, like eccentric I've seen that pop dude. up, but I haven't watched it. Man, fuck. It is like one of those so strange, it's fucking hilarious type things, but a pretty hectic story. He ends up, think. He ends up basically like paying to have somebody knocked off in Belize and shit like that and completely gets away with it. He's a real like crazy manipulative guy. But like... Wow. Basically like... Made made a whole fuck ton of money off the McAfee thing, but was never really the sort of like high end exec type. And so when the GFC happened in two thousand and eight, he went from having like a hundred mil to less than ten. So he basically like picked up and moved to Belize because in Belize ten mil is fucking a it's shitload. You yeah. said for life and tax so he, haven he and beca- shit too. Yeah, exactly. And he wow. and he started like doing all this other entrepreneurial shit. He he like basically bought the police like off like butted them up with fucking bought them all sorts of tasers and fucking equipment and shit like that just basically started making Belize his own little playground and stuff like that and he would get these um these girls like who were basically teenagers like he said you know nothing nothing illegal or whatever but <clears throat> super super young looking chicks who were just like poor and like no opportunities and shit like that. So they they would go to him and say, you know, like, can we can we live and work with you and shit like that? And they would obviously in turn become his girlfriends and shit. And his thing was like, um, you know, there's going to be other girls here. Everybody gets along. It's as long as it's good vibes, then everybody can stay, sort of thing. But then they're talking to these girls, man, and these are, these are completely like, you know. They've got nothing to gain by talking shit on him. Yeah, so they're course. just being completely honest. And um, all every single one of them is saying how into scat sex he was. In fact, <laughs> one of them, he never... Scat, nev- what, as in shitting? As in shitting in his mouth. And they, and they would like... She was like, he would always get us to like shit in his mouth and I never do something like that before and it's it's like strange wow. and like he would hold his hand and what? we would have to shit in his hand and what? stuff like that and <laughs> what? Like, oh. man he was really into scat and like this one girl she was saying that they didn't even have vaginal sex at all he only um, got her, her to sh- uh, he only ate her shit <laughs> and and oh, like played with her shit, fuck yeah. Around, and then bro. the next, th- and then the next thing, he's like running for a um, you know an independent party in the states. He managed to get his way back into the states. Um, fucking paid off all these like local criminals and gangbangers and shit to basically become his own personal militia and like set up a police station on his on his lot and all this sort of stuff, man. Like, wow. the fucking weirdest dude, eh? Like, oh, but wow, trippy. That's, that's like I, I I don't know. Like, you could consider yourself a sexual freak, but that's nah, some fucking that's another level. level. That's some other level. Or fucking when you kill yourself, like um. Michael what? Hutchins Michael back. Hutchins, mm. yeah. He was yeah. apparently he was a sex addict. Call him an Yeah, yeah, he was yeah. fucking addicted to it. Uh, did you guys hear uh, Richard? Uh, what, who's that guy who the sex addict that was married to Katy Perry who was on JRE? Uh, Russell, Russell, Brand. Oh, Russell Brand. Russell Brand. Russell Brand, yeah, exactly. I love Russell Brand. Bro, I love he, he's, good value, he's yeah. a likable yeah. dude, you know. Like he's, he's honest. He's very honest. He's, yeah. he's like really... Uh, he's very articulate, very yeah, intellectual. Really articulate, But yeah. honest, but very honest. So he talks about his own issues like 
Yeah, I'll talk about them. I'll t- that they're nothing. Yeah, because I'm trying to help other people. Mm. Mm. So he has a, a way of saying quite a simple point with like so much beautiful fl- words. flowery language. Yeah, yeah. Sort of yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Did you watch the podcast with him and Joe Rogan? Yeah, loved it. yeah, loved, loved it. it. Yeah, yeah, it was good. I w- I originally thought these motherfuckers are going to clash, mm. um, and there was a I couple was of disagreements, well. but not they actually f- they f- they flowed off each other really really well. Oh, yeah. definitely. Yeah. yeah, I thought yeah. that was a really like a uh, a thought-provoking conversation they had. They had a third bloke but there for that too. Was that Brian Redbend? No. No, no, no. no. It was no, the it was dude like, from um, Half Baked. I, the guy that's he's like... He's a weirdo. Um, he's a weirdo. What's his fucking name? He but he's... Got, um, he always does his He's the, like the half-retarded guy. Like, you have yeah. smoked yourself retarded. Like, Oh, Brian. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, Brian. <laughs> like the, the guy who's like... I'll pretend I'm Jamaican, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> that guy. Oh, let's go. That guy. Brian, yeah. nice, yeah. nice. But he's all right. He's pretty cool. Um, but it was more like it was flying off him and Joe. Yeah. yeah. So it was oh, yeah, awesome. shit. Yeah, they, yeah. Th- they threw down. I, I had to listen to that one in stages, I found, because it sort of got, you know, or it alphabet, deep. alphabet soup, like with with what's his name again? Russell Brand. With Russell Brand, like yeah. that that back to what Daniel was saying before about uses long, you know, winded sort of yeah. like I mean, really poetic way of poetic speaking. ways yeah. of like saying points and yeah. which I like, which I like, I like to hear. But if I you do too, run, yeah. If but there's also a there's also a level of the one thing that I I, I think Australians do best. It's, Queensland is where the Texans. This is what I've I've broken down. We're the Texans of Australia, Australia. for sure. So Absolutely, we talk more like the rednecks would talk yep. in America. Yeah, we're a little bit more wild here. Yeah, um, you know, it's more of a country sort of. We're laid back, um, but we're crazy as fucking batshit. Mm, definitely, and our language is even different. Like we, yep. we're lazy with like we have the strongest sounding accent out of the entire country. So, in knowing that, sometimes when we talk, we don't sound exactly the most poetic. But I've noticed Queenslanders are the most switched on. So when I've had conversations, I lived in Western Australia for a while. You know, I've gone out of Sydney now. I've, you know, I've, I've been around and I've, when I've travelled, I've realised that Queenslanders are the most switched on. They say things more shorter and blunter mm. and they sound probably a little bit more Australian when they do it, but they're to the point. Yeah, yeah. direct. Very direct. direct. But it does, it does, it's funny you mentioned that too. It does, Queensland does have that reputation as sort of like a wild, wild west sort of stigma to it. We 100% it is, are. Like, definitely. We 100% and, are. Like, my missus is from Western Australia and we've got mates who are from Tasmania as well. Yeah. And it is it is like going to different states, like the pronunciation on like pool shed, go for a swim in the pool. Yeah. Like yeah those yeah, sort of yeah, things. Yeah. We're like, yeah, go in the pool, mate. Eh? Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, I remember even <laughs> as a kid having um, <laughs> having <laughs> co- hey, mate, yeah. cousins in Sydney and shit. I was like, they, they kind of sound funny. They all sort of sound the mm. same, but it's not yeah. quite like mm. us. Like, why do they sound different? Co- like, well, I never got it. Shit. I never got mm. it. When I, when I moved to Western <laughs> Australia, I moved over there years ago um, with an ex just to fucking something new to get away. And um, I went to this place. I forgot what cafe is. It's a franchise they have over there. They make the best food. Um, Western Australia still has the best food that I've eaten in Australia. Yeah, right. Nice. Really, really good food. Um, and coffees, they make good coffees over there. So anyway, I used to go to this one place every morning. And um, I'd always just, because I say it now, and I, I try and not think about it, but I always say g'day, mate. I say g'day to everyone. Yeah, it's I'm, just I'm something like that. I can't like help that. it. Very much. So, I don't, so I, now I've just gone, oh, fuck it. But when I was over there, I didn't realise how I spoke because I thought everyone in Australia sounds the same. So I'd go to this cafe and I'm like, g'day, how you going? Can I just get a flat white? And they're like, you're, you're from Queensland. And I'm like, True. how the yeah. fuck do you know that? Point. Yeah, yeah, right. And I was like, how do you know that? And she goes, oh, you know, you can just tell by how you guys say g'day and you say yeah. hey. A mm. bit of country. And lazy. Yeah, yeah exactly. it's, it's the country. Mm. So we're... So the way you break it down is more the rednecks. Of For the, sure. Yeah. And, it, and it definitely gets, as, as someone who gets around Australia a fair bit myself, man, it gets like more, um, more like articulated as you head north and like west. So, you know, like, I mean, as you get away from the cities and stuff yeah. like that, you go up to sort of like your, your Townsville's or your Proserpines or your Rockhamptons or, you know, Cairns or anything like that. And, and the, the, that, Accent is almost a little bit more. Well, almost like you're getting further south mm. in the States. Yeah, sort of thing, you're like you're Louis- Louisiana. Yeah. Yeah. That's coming from Louisiana, baby. Fucking hell. <laughs> Young but Mola. Yeah, the New Orleans. The, <laughs> state, the States is somewhere that's got that mm. bad, like way, way worse than Australia could ever possibly have it between like a, our States. A, yeah, well, there's so much more people, but there's so much more. Um, we're, we're the most multicultural um, country on the planet. 
but per America, capita or per something. Capita, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but um, America, their cultures have taken over certain areas, so the the, the accent is embraced. For sure. So you can just tell so there's so many differences. Well, look, but, yeah, look at so, look, compare Uriah Faber to Stipe. Exactly. Like, in that, yeah. In that sort of like mentality yeah, where exactly. both Faber, American, you know, precisely, bro. Yeah. Like Faber got that Cali twang. Yeah. yeah. Where Stipe mm-hmm. just. Talks is like the fastest fucking dude yeah. in the world. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm the, the world, world champ. And then you've got like, world champ. And world champ. Oh, fuck it, mate. The, the still the most adrenaline pumped man I've ever seen in mixed right. martial arts in that moment right, when he knocked right. out Vadum. I'm mate. telling you now, he's one of my favourites, and because he's a fellow Croatian, so my father's a Croat. Okay. Oh, right, really? cool. And what, what's your what's your mum? Is your mum an Aussie? She's Australian. We're, yeah, right. We're, we're pretty Australian as far as you can go. So, um, my grandfather, um, he sort of got our all our family lineage done and. We're first fleet, man. So we're proper. We're the we're, we're convicts that originally landed here. So okay, crow crop fan. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, Croat. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I think everyone's a Croat fan. Yeah. Regardless yeah. Of where Even you're if from, you're not man. Croatian, if you're Croatian, yeah. you don't like Croat. You're not Croatian. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. The guys, yeah. the guys were in his prime. National oh, treasure. in his pri- if pride. 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 Yeah. Left kicks. Uh, red. Uh, right uh, kick. Uh, hospital. hospital. <laughs> left kick. Cemetery. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that, that was the same, dude. That if you um, same. if you had had him sort of peaking like modern day mm. MMA now with the sort of tra- he'd, he'd be the world champ yeah he'd be the world champ undoubtedly he, yeah because just he, he like he's just he was so good at that kick like his kicks were incredible but he was just so tough mm. yeah like he was just intimidatingly tough oh you know? and the, just walk at you like that, the Terminator he was he was like you know ridiculously ridiculously popular in Japan during those yeah, prior days yeah was huge Crow Cop was, was a, a, an enormous star made a lot of money over, over there. there definitely made a lot of money definitely over there. man like Pride Grand Prix heavyweight, multiple, you know, multiple Grand Prix heavyweight champion yeah. over there. He's looking at having some fights in Ryzen yeah, these I think, days. I think he's Is he reti- still fighting? Yeah, no, yeah, no. I, believe so. I believe he's retired. Really, now. mate? I think I think really? Ryzen coming out, no testing in Japan. Fedor, just come Fedor. back. Fedor. Yeah, exactly. Fedor's come back. Man, That's he's, true. He's That's fighting true. Matt Mitrione in two weeks' time. Fedor on Bellator. Bellator. Oh, Bellator. They rescheduled Madison Square. that. Yeah, oh, that's on. Oh, good shit. That's, uh, so what's, uh, what's your thoughts on that? Oh, Mitrione, Mitrione had to pull out really, really late last time yeah, round as, as a result stone. of yeah kidney stones or something similar to that. And um, I can't not support Fedor um, yep. just because, but... On another point, I hate Matt Mitrione. Meathead. Yeah. Do you hate him from Tough? Like from back in that day? Yeah. That's still my favorite season of Tough. It was a bit. Aside from the first one, that that was my introduction to mixed martial martial arts. arts, Start watching that with my dad, like just like Foxtel and. We're the same age as you, so 05 was grade 12 for us. And I remember sitting there like. Is that his record? Watching that going, uh, watching this old man's at home and he's like. What the fuck is this? Yeah, like, what these is boys that? are like Diego Sanchez, Kenny Florian, and that shit, was like, scrapping in the house, just, like just fucking, fucking going. Just like Diaz, what, Diaz, yeah, Diaz what is this? Like, what is this sort of shit? And that yeah. was like it that was me. A, that, that was our introduction. Me. Yeah, yeah, that hooked me on that. But um, I was like, these okay. motherfuckers no. are crazy. Stop, For sure. stop, stop there, Danny. Can you go back down? See, they're rising, man. He's had, he's fighting record. there. He's had a yeah. couple of fights in rising. Wow, you're right. Right back at two forty five and just cut in half. Yeah, are they all wins? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So he came back and got that Gonzaga one song with the UFC. Was that two consecutive guys? Satoshi, um, Satoshi he's fighting Japs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They must be big. Oh yeah, mate. Go, go scroll down to the the Pride Days, Danny, where he's got like Kevin Randleman. Did Shab he's be? got a Al- lost to Shab. Yeah, Al- yeah. Alistair Overeem. No, what was that? What was it? No contest. Coleman. What was the no Vandalay contest? Alistair Overeem. Yeah, it said no contest. What was that? Josh Barnett. Um, Lost to Fedor Lost God to Fedor, yeah Damn That is a record, yeah, man That's yeah. a veteran And good names there too like, Oh, big Like all time Look at that you know, like, Hall of Fame two, MMA people in there. How did Randleman two, two, beat him? Kevin Randleman beat him R.I.P Look, man two, 2002 R.I.P. And he's got a draw there Against Vandalay And Vandalay is still uh, he, He's fighting Chael in two weeks <sighs> Yeah Who, what, How do you see that going? Just is Chael able to just take him down and, I and, think, and keep him there or is Vandalay? Yeah. Chael's, Chael's a smart guy, man. Mm. And he's already in Vandalay. Vandalay's a dumb dude, man. He, oh. He's a silly man. He, like he just he just runs at you and, and 
the axe murderer. Mm, like yeah. That's a psychopath. So. Like that, that tough house sort of got an insight yeah, yeah. into the uh, Vandalay mindset. Like Chael yeah. just sort of made yeah. him look like a punk on he that did. show. Yeah, yeah. yeah. he just, did. The just language just barrier there and shit too doesn't help. But when you got someone who is like quick witted and articulate as Chael, like he can fucking put Bro, the hurt people, on people, people in the media. Yeah. Like, mate, Chael Sonnen is one of my favorites for sure. Just, just as a person, because um. Getting busted for steroids and then just openly going, yeah, fucking what of it? Yeah, yeah that's yeah. it. Yeah. He took it I like did. a man. He yeah, took he it just like goes, a yeah, man. Yeah, okay, I did it. I, I owned up. He talked about it on the podcast. Mm. Yeah. He goes, Joe, when you're my age and fucking you're fighting in this competition, you know, your, your body starts to. He's yeah. a pretty intelligent, wise He's sort of character. He's brilliant, old, man. He's old brilliant. Old Chow, yeah. He, Chow Sonnen is the one guy out of. Anyone in that MMA world that I'd actually want to do a podcast with, oh, for oh, sure. sit down and shit, talk yeah. to him because oh, he'd one, be he'd be entertaining as fuck because mm. he's so quick witted. But two, he's a, he's a very smart mind, and and as yeah. a like his future is commentating. Oh, for sure. You wouldn't even need to participate in the podcast. You'd just be like, no, all right, mate, mate, we're recording. Where are you going? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Chow, just talk and I'm yeah. just going to... Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I have nothing to tell you, mate. Yeah. I'm a, yeah. <laughs> you'll know it. <laughs> <laughs> so, mate, do you want me to tell you about when I was rocking trains when I was fucking like <laughs> 10 years old? <laughs> I've done that. I did that at five. <laughs> Uh, I'm a, a regular on his podcast, and I, yeah, as you say, he can just hold his own on there. He had a one of his old Team Quest buddies, like Joel, was a his sidekick on there for a little bit, but he's since moved on to a, go to another job in Kansas. And uh, what can Ch- you, yeah, Chael is yeah, just how can uh, you how can you share a podcast with sure, that guy for sure? He, he can just riff on his own for for hours. He'll get a guest on, and it just that stock stock standard sort of American who is just. Yeah. Uh, Personality plus, like yeah. I, I've I've always had a really good rapport with any Americans that I've met. Eh? I like yeah. that sort of in your face conversation. I, you know what, man? Eh? I you hear a lot of like when I've met Americans um, in Thailand, didn't have good experiences. Um, when I met medic- Americans in Australia, um, I've had amazing experiences. Mm, yeah. I've met nothing but good Yanks. Yeah, right. Like, I've always got along with them. Um, I actually met a guy on the plane coming back from um, Sydney the other week and I met this dude on my plane and he was this young American dude. Um, I f- fucking forgot his name now. We ended up dropping him home. Um, but I was just sitting next to this dude and we were talking about like, – he was 22 and he was uh, – he's visiting his sister who she goes to the University of Queensland up here in Brisbane and he's from the technology university in Sydney somewhere. Uh, he's like studying computer sciences and like he's like ass into all crazy technology, like brilliant mind. Mm. Anyway, I just picked this guy's brain on the plane because I was bored. And so we just started talking shit. We ended up dropping the dude home. But he was the most stand-up guy. He was so polite. He was so polite to my missus. Like mm. he was so friendly. And I was like talking to him about Australia because I was like, I want to know what you actually really think. Someone that's lived here. Someone that goes to and studies over here, he works over here. Like, tell me what your interpretation of Australia is. He goes, oh, I'm, 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 I want to move here. Yeah, every single a lot, one of a lot, them. lot do. Yeah, every a lot single do. person I've ever met want to move to Australia once yeah. they've been here. Yeah, exactly. and I think like you're saying as well, we we've grown up, you know, just as we've grown up with. Pammy Anderson and all that shit with heaps of American culture, you know? So yeah. we feel a resonance with it anyway. And then we're kind of like novelty to them a little bit mm, because yeah, they've had little definitely. little tidbits of the, you know, Crocodile yeah. Dundee is, has worked its way into their sort it's of entertainment so culture. Their interpretation like, is different from what ours is of theirs. Yeah, so and so we like, both oh, have these like sort us. of like stereotyped images through, yeah. you know, entertainment and shit like that, but... Yeah, you, like it's like anywhere, man. You meet people of all. The, there's plenty of dickhead Yanks as well as there's plenty of dickhead plenty of stand up guys. Yeah, yeah. And, and Aussies the same. Yeah, I met this dude in um in LA once. He was like a buddy of mine that I was staying with. His his neighbor was this guy Jason. I remember he asked me one time. He's like, "Oh, Australia? Is there a is there black people in Australia? What?" And I was like, <laughs> "Yeah, what do you man. mean black man? Like <laughs> it's like mm-hmm. a lot of different." nationalities mm. there you know like but he just had this concept like i don't know he was just they just have no idea what it is i had a, well i mm. had an american uh a girl that i used to see a little while ago um when we first sort of started hooking up i think i was about 23 24 um i had her convinced on the night we, we met we we're drinking piss and we we're sort of partying that when i was a kid 
like those big giant red kangaroos, like the seven footers. Big reds, yeah. Yeah. Those big Nate Diaz looking fucking yeah. flex up. <laughs> 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 Stuffed baby. I love yeah. how he does that. Yeah. Man. Yeah. That's a kangaroo thing. So um, so I had this, you know, I had this girl convinced that you used to ride when you're younger. You used to ride in the pouches, and they'd take you to school. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I'm not yeah. even exaggerating. Yeah. They believe you. Yeah. They believe in drop bears. Yeah. They believe in all that shit, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah I guess if you're selling any anything, like you can sell something like ice know, to Eskimos if you and, really need well, to. And you well, know, and you yeah. know what? Do you know what I've learned about Australians is that people have trouble understanding our humor more than anyone oh, because definitely. we're so Massively. serious. So yeah. we can sit here and talk shit, yeah, with a straight face and yeah. not even laugh, and then they're like, "Are you joking?" Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, I am. yeah. Well, the exactly. sort of I'm like what? Yeah, the kind of we have this like sort of hypothetical sense of humor where we mm. throw a bunch of hypotheticals yeah. into the mix that like, and we say it literally. Oh, li- mm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. We say it like as a, that literally happens. And then people are like, "No, no, no, let's not, let's not do that." And you're like, "Nah, nah, man, I was, I was joking." Yeah, yeah, yeah. They think we're literal, so I think we actually swim with sharks and fucking we fight snakes in our backyard. Like anyway, man, I'll see you later. Where? <laughs> like, oh, n- no man Like goodbye for now <laughs> Goodbye Like fucking yeah. Straight up man It's that sort of mentality I remember We were sitting at a game uh, in, <laughs> in Seattle At um, Yan- Yankees versus Mariners Like Brad Another dude who's been On the podcast before Like Where they're Like eight, ten beers deep Start getting a bit loose With the swearing and stuff Like as, as Aussies do But it's like It's not the uh, Not the done thing So much over there So drop a few C-bombs And this like Big fella in front of us Like <laughs> I can turns around sort of straight up and like, oh, no, here's some sort of like maybe confrontation or something. He's like, where are you from? I'm like, ah, oh, fuck, he's going to chip us here for sure. I'm like, uh, Brisbane, Australia is home for us. Like, he goes, what do you know about that funnel web spider? Like straight up, I'm like, oh, I was like, man, I was like, man, my backyard is just littered with holes, man. Like you wear shoes in your backyard out there, man. They'll come up that little like funnel that they dig into the ground, bang, straight up. Like you got 30 minutes tops. He's like... <laughs> just fascinated by it, eh? but, but as you say, like they'll just take anything in, man. I mean, mate, sitting there next to me trying to hold it together, but is that everyone, everyone else, they think we all look. Lives? They all think, yeah, right? They, like, they, uh, they funnel into the ground, like oh. in uh, like backyards and stuff. The most yeah. dangerous spider, yeah. yeah the like, just look dangerous. fucking yeah. terrifying. All, just all, fucking, all, yeah. The, yeah, just, just like all the really, game. really poisonous. I don't think one, I've ever seen one. All the really poisonous ones in Australia are like small too, aren't they? Top ten most poisonous stuff in the world. We've got like. Eight or nine of them. Yeah, mm. yeah. <laughs> Funnel webs yeah. that little real hairy black one yeah. with like the like the yeah. Mate, that, you that you quite literally don't have long at all if Ooh. it uh, if it takes you down. Yeah, I don't know. That's like I don't know what what categorizes or classifies as arachnophobic, but spiders I do yeah. not do not enjoy Shh. looking at them even. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, yeah I'm I'm right there with Look you. That guy. Just also, unpredictable yeah. in their movement and their like their they don't really. Do, in, they Do just look spiders com- like that have a brain or they is look it just com- nerve endings and shit? I don't know. They look completely heart- heartless. <laughs> they yeah. look like I don't think they yeah. have no empathy whatsoever. No, oh, They're just snakes. like a, a yep. mechanical Nil. fucking Nil. nightmare. There's no, uh, snakes are more beautiful to look at though than that. Oh. Zero, yes. zero yes. compassion. As long, as long as I'm standing a long way away from them then, both snakes and spiders are pretty much like give me that sort of phobia. That oh, like fucking get that away from mm. me type thing. You know? Do you want to hear? Do you, do you want to hear a horror story? Yeah, go on. So I'm just smoking some weed here. <laughs> 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 um, so I have like a I can't I can't go into water pretty much below my waist now. Really? Like, yeah. So I um in in high school in year twelve, like I was a right into my surfing. I was really, really good. A mm. mate of mine, and we used to always wag school and go surfing. Nice Coast. man. I'm a. Sur- we're all surfers. All oh, like me and Danny surf ourselves. Yeah, yeah. right. Okay, cool. So like, I was, um, you know, I was pretty talented at because I had good balance from footy yeah, martial yeah. arts. So I picked it up really well. I didn't really have the fear of sharks yet. Yeah. Um, a mate and I, my and who's now off overseas, sort of traveling surfing. He's turned into a full sort of surf travel the world sort of thing. Sick. Um, me and him used to surf together a fair bit, and um. At his rock, at at uh, Strat- 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 yeah. Strat- yeah, so you yeah, know those rocks good, are. decent right that breaks there. They get all right. Yeah, they get all right. Definitely. And after a storm, you cylinders. Fucking cylinders is better. Like yeah, um, yeah. like it actually breaks properly, but yeah, yeah out of rock breaks all right. It's good if you go at a good time of the year. Yeah, for sure. Um, and so we were out at as rock, and we sort of took 
the Friday off we were because I was had my license then. So obviously we used to just like seventy. Just, you know, seventy. Got the barge over. Took off from Cleveland. Yeah, yeah. 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 So seventy, but at seventy six days, I um wagged high school year twelve. Seventy six. They weren't. They weren't going to graduate me, but I was a footy captain, so it sort of let me get away <laughs> with it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, my principal called me up and said, well, you know, we like we can't really technically like you haven't had you've had too many days off. Like, yeah, and actually. Sign right. you off, but I smoked all my fucking tests. Right, yeah, because I was just yeah, like, right. I was just like, oh, fucking mate. This uh, this outlaw nickname is making more and more sense. We <laughs> <laughs> yeah. get deeper and deeper into this shit. <laughs> <laughs> just sort of go my own way, mate. <laughs> it's gotten me a lot of trouble too. But anyway, so you used to go surfing at Outer Rock. Yeah, so we were all, we'd always leave school and just sort of go to Outer Rock. Um, but. We would normally go to Malula Bar when we were like first sort of during the week, but we would take like a Friday off. Mm-hmm. And I'd stay, I was saying at a mate's place, but we'd go like Friday morning in our school uniform, go straight to Stratty for the weekend, come back Monday. Sick. And so it was this one weekend, we took a couple of the boys up and we were sort of teaching some of them how to surf. Now, it was, uh, it was overcast, it was late afternoon, and it just started sprinkling. So it's probably not a good time to be in the water. Um, so obviously we, but the waves were pumping. So we, we were sitting out there, and a mate of mine. Had, I'm not going to mention his name because he'll the poor cunt will probably get fucking. Uh, he'll feel bad about it. But he always used to go shark. He was go shark. Like he, we used to shit ourselves. We'd grab he'd, hoax sort of thing. Oh, he'd be the, he'd be like, the guy that grab your ankle. Yep. Right. I've yeah. done that a few times. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. We've all done it. Yeah. Right? <laughs> we all used to do it and have a laugh about yeah. it. Yeah, I've never been able to really convince anybody, I don't think. No, nah, because well, you've got, you got to swim over close to them and yeah. like, you've got to yeah. dive under and yeah. then you've got to go... Like, like I saw along. you coming, dickhead. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but if someone even yelling shark in that sort of that yeah. area... Oh, yeah. 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 yeah, no thanks. But we became so conditioned to it that the whole boy that cried wolf theory... Yeah, mm. for sure. I was a perfect example of that. So the boy that cried wolf theory was a legit ha- thing happened that I nearly got attacked by a tiger shark. Really? Yeah. Attacked? No, nearly attacked. Oh, yeah, So yeah. I wasn't attacked. Yeah, but yeah, But I was yeah. nearly attacked. So we were, um, I missed my set. The boy's gone in and I'm just sitting on my thing. And I was just sitting there just going, oh, th- just f- I feel a bit off. Oh, I missed my set. It was pretty flat. So I'm thinking, fuck. So I just started paddling in. And the boys on the beach just started banging, started banging the sand. I think I'm fucking coming in. They're screaming at me, but I'm going. Fuck True. You. Yeah, I you know, don't like, believe you. I don't believe you. Whatever. Um, but then I got a little bit of a weird feeling in my stomach. I seen a wave, so I'm thinking oh, I'll just catch this one in. Anyway, there was a few coming. I took that one, and as you know, it had a rock. Once you take a wave, and you still got to swim in a fair way, because obviously where the rocks are, like you come mm. in, it doesn't finish all the way, and you yeah, got, yeah, you yeah, still, yeah, you still yeah. got a bit of a distance to swim in. Mm. How um, the boy see the shark? What it was? It wasn't that. It was closer to the beach. Oh, so it was in. So the, it was in the shallow. It was shallow. Right. So it was shallow, and they've, okay. they've seen it from ages away. Yeah, right. And so as I sort of like started to look over, they're still gone, and my mates run up to the fucking thing trying to get people to come down. So I'm, I started to actually panic a little bit. So I'm thinking I got to get this wave in. Whatever's going on, something's going on. Yeah, I didn't yeah, see. Yeah, yeah. The, see the anything. boys are freaking out. On I the, didn't on see the rocks. anything. I didn't see anything until it nicked my board, but I came off and I'm thinking, if I keep going now, in my gut, I was like, I know there's a shark in the water. I just knew it. Yeah. If I come off my board, I'm going to get fucking eaten. What I have two decisions. I get off and like take the wave in, let it finish, and then keep paddling in, but I've still got a bit of distance to go, or dive straight into the rocks. Yeah, right. I've only got two options, so I just took it into the rocks, jumped up, sliced my fucking hand, see that? Thing now, I nearly lost my thumb. Right. So like, Yikes, so I'm man. laying on the rocks. Yeah. I've, I've gone yeah. swimming. But guess what's happening then? So I've landed on the rocks. I'm just holding on. Blood. Yeah. Blood. Blood. Just burling yeah. out the just water. Just fucking <laughs> pouring out of my fucking hand. And I seen this thing popped its eye up. It was just like, boom, nudge my board. I'm going, get the fuck out of here. Didn't grab, nothing happened. But it was hanging out because obviously the blood was in the water then. But it sticked its head up And then they got the fucking guards To come out And I jumped in And it still hung around Even when the boat come up Fuck that's so such, such strange behaviour For a shark to, to do that sort of Mate like... I, I got back in the water Like I got back And yeah. I was like 
I, I could tell you for, for days I was so shooken up. Yeah. Um, oh, bears. shit. I can't get on a surfboard again now. Mm. Right. Like, I can't, like, I go to Moorba Beach, probably the main little beach there. Yeah. I'm way steep. See, it's, it's ah, phobia I now, can, man. I can yeah. understand that, man. Yeah. Definitely. I watched. Have um, you had a close, have you had an experience? I haven't. I watched the, the, there was a 60 Minutes recently where they interviewed a whole bunch of people. You know, the recent spate of shark attacks that's been happening in northern New South Wales. So there's been, Multiple incidents in Ballina and shit They're like that. They're getting territorial now. Mm. Yeah, well, uh, there's yeah, it's it's such a fucking box of frogs that we could try and open up. But um, but they interviewed a lot of these guys that had had like uh, there was one dude who um, rescued this Japanese uh, surfer who um, had been attacked by this shark, and by the time they got him to the beach, he was pretty much dead because he was so fucked up from it, and the. And so basically, like, he was one example and then there were several others that had either, you know, been attacked themselves or been involved in a rescue or something and now had PTSD. So they had this, like, men's, men's yeah. sort of support group where they'd meet up and, and you know, like, discuss, just support each other, basically. And, yeah, um, right. And the, the guy who saved the Japanese bloke, he was talking about... Um, you know, the, the, the sheer look in his eyes... Um, as the as he's sort of trying to get this guy into the beach who's just been attacked by this fucking you know sharp tooth monster basically and also um, got him yeah, yeah well well like yeah it, it, he died from his injuries sort of thing oh, but um shit and and the the journalist has prompted him like oh you know the look of the the look of death and this guy you can tell he's physically you know reliving this somewhat as he's discussing this with the interviewer and shit and he's like it's it's not death it's like horror beyond what you mm. could fucking imagine this is like somebody who's who's gone out in the most terrifying fucking way possible being pulled limb from limb by a fucking literal monster yeah exactly and um human, and you know you can see teeth. the the, the last the lasting world, ramifications of of those sort of trauma, traumatic incidents that that I don't doubt fucking if I got nudged off my board fucking probably probably be enough mm. to make even even now man like I've got mates who do trips over to Morton and stuff like that yeah. and, and and swear by the surf over there on the North Point and all that sort of stuff but yeah. to me it's not worth it it's not worth it for a few a few barrels and a few turns mm. fucking yeah. the the I'm I'm not actually relaxed out there when I'm yeah. having fun surfing it's like I'm not um, you know, fucking getting smashed with huge sets on the head. I, yeah. I'm surfing a sunny, sunny, easy to paddle, three foot, three a foot frame, close, a frame yeah. man. Close, that, that's yeah. me. I'm a fair weather surfer, yeah, and I, yeah. I've been a kook my whole life, pretty much. So yeah. that that's where I'm at. But um, but yeah, there's it's smarter. It is yeah, smarter. The, there's like the charging big waves and and the dangerous mm. fucking spots yeah. aspect of man, surfing tell you, for me I, isn't worth it. It's not, man. And I tell you what, um, what happened. My mate ended up getting real fucking serious issues about it because he was sitting there just going, I was about to watch my mate get attacked by a shark mm. and it was my fault that I kept saying because he was the number one guy that did it all the time. It was like a really confronting yeah. thing for him. Because it, it's PTSD for all involved too. That, like, that, mate, exactly seeing, right. seeing yeah. like, yeah, you, one of your and and sort of thinking, the water, as a, like, imagine thinking as a teenager how damaging that would have been for mm. him as a teenager go, I nearly got my mate killed. Definitely. Like, that's why I take my hat off so much to a bloke like Mick Fanning, like mm. oh. goes back to J Bay the following year and wins. Like mm. just when you yeah. punch, when you he punch was, a shark, yeah, just face like, to face. Like, yeah, jeez, that's the that's the last place you would think that so, that would have happened. You know, when that happened, that was fucking world news, man. Like, yeah, crazy. Oh, babe, but J yeah. Bay was like basically the most common place where that would happen on the tour. I, like, I remember yeah. South Africa like that, man. Ooh, I was I fuck remember. South Africa. Yeah. Fuck yeah. South, yeah. South yeah. Africa. Yeah, off. Why would you even surf there? Yep. You know yeah. they hunt. And breathe, yeah, fucking bro. It's a I've, haven, man. Some guys are just keen enough, eh? I've, yeah. I've, I've, I've surfed Those through, boy dudes, they're yeah. nuts. Yeah. Those I've, motherfuckers are nuts. I've surfed through Northern California, man, and Northern California gets like some of the biggest great white sharks in the world, you know? Really? So, like, I mean, you, you, although you do it. It's not like you're, although you're aware of it, the risk of it is so low that, you know, like it's sort of, I get what you're saying about, you know, that you're stressed out in the water and all that sort of stuff, but it's like you've got to think the totally, amount. Yeah, totally. you know, like the odds are on your side. So you do because it's an experience, yeah. you know. There's, but, um, but, there's that, a, but, but that odd that doesn't yeah. end up on your side is like, yeah. when it comes down to oh, horror, horror, like Daniel said, yeah. horror. Yeah. Yeah. As, as, you, as, you get, as you get older, prioritising your time with your activities and stuff, like I can't think, now where 
people like, oh, you go do Mount Tibrigargan. Like, there's a little bit of a, uh, like a glasshouse mountain where there's a little bit of rock face and stuff. If something ever happened to me, man, I don't love that shit nearly enough to sit there so you and can't, struggle. So you can't get up to, bro? No. So I've never, my, never, never my even my tried, but never even tried, but anyone talking like rock I've climbing never, and shit, it's like, I don't love it oh, that boys, much. Boys, it's a good fucking, so Tibro's, Tibro's not hard. Nah. You just, yeah, no. nah, it's not hard. It's not hard. Would I do it? Up Easy. Yeah? Easy. Right. Yeah. Smash it. So I've built this thing up a, like it's nah, fucking there's this one El little, Capitan. There's this one little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Alex, Alex Honnold yeah, pre-climbed yeah. that. Yeah, just I'm, happened. I'm, I'm thinking it's just like happened. the yeah. north face of El Capitan. Yeah, that's well, crazy. Who, what's this? Who's this? Ja- uh, Alex Honnold, who is the world's, you know, premier free rock climber, like um, climbed El Capitan, which is in um, in Yosem- Yosemite. Yosemite Park. So what's uh, so when you say free climb without ropes, man. Nothing so free. Free climber, he basically he has climbing shoes and a little sack with um, chalk in it, and he's just out there raw dogging it. Yeah, he, he's, yeah. Get he's the fuck out of here. Yeah, show me, show me some of his stuff. Him and him and I get sweaty when I watch this. Mm. Stuff, oh, man. it's oh. terrifying. Um, the, there's another guy that uh, he's been on a Rogan, bro. Has he uh, really? Tunnel, yeah, he's yeah. so uh, really? he's so he's conservative. He's like, that, um, he's like, come on, man! Like you climb that, he's like, yeah, it's, it's not really that big a deal. Like, yeah, like, yeah, he's like, a geek. He like, come on, give me something, man. Does he do a barefoot? Uh, he has like specific shoes on no, for it, but yeah. uh, that's that's probably the only assistance that you have is the climbing shoes that sort of um, cram your toes like really hard into a hard plastic um, end on them, so your feet kind of become like these little like. Yeah. Uh, sort of peg things that you can yeah, purchase right. on like really how, well. How a goat would manage, like yeah. yeah so you like sort that. of stick, Those, stick man, in your goats are in. nuts, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I watch a I watch a doco on them, and I was blown away just in the trees and shit. Those things are weird. Mm. Versatile mm. They are you versatile It makes you wonder They're How many agility. of them Do take the plunge though eh? Like they Yeah Like oh no nah, You fucked up like, Yeah exactly. One mistake on that, some of that shit In a oh, shot sure, But that's sure, the same sure. As this Alex guy Yeah man. Fuck Mate he would be all of like Alex Honnold would, What's he like Five six one twenty five something like that. Is he a big dude? No, like, he's, no, he's a little. real. He's tall. He's Is he tall. really? Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, he's, he's, See, I'd see him as being compact. Yeah, so did yeah. I. I thought he'd be a little fella. Yeah, I reckon he'd be five eleven, six foot. So what's re- what's El Sen- Sendero? This is the this is the one you're telling me about. Nah, this no, is a no, different. It only happened two days ago, oh, so I'm not sure if there's footage of it. But this is essentially free climbing. Yeah. Yeah. That's you know that's. Oh my god! That's guaranteed death if you make one one false move. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that wow. is just mind-boggling, so, isn't it? So this is a north it's face. It's a shame. You, what, Alex see, Honnold. see where he's there. Yeah. What if he gets stuck Alex and sent, you're like, you like you? Send right, out. Yeah, no, nah, I'm, I'm, I'm over it. Like I'm, I want to get off. Yeah. Like, how, how does he do that? For, for anyone that isn't looking what, what we're looking at, it's pretty much like Alex Honnold stuck to the side of a cliff with at least a 75 to 100 metre drop. 100 down, metre. Down, yeah. At least 100 metre. For, down look at cliff. the size of that. Yeah. Oh, where, where he was before, I mean, yeah. For anyone who's not looking at so what that's we're what looking at, like, i.e. everyone. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 so true. I didn't even pick up on that yeah. dumb, dumb part. Nah, they yeah. might be sinking Un- the under- YouTuber. Yeah, we've got the... Uh, <laughs> Alex Honnold companion. (laughs) 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 Wow. But yeah, I mean, um, any of the... um, Glasshouse Mountains and nothing. There like she that. is. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, old Pamela's still up there. Like. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no. But, what about uh, that? What about that? Fight? But there's Mount, there's Mount Beerwar as well, which is um, That's in, in my opinion that that was probably, I guess, I guess Tibrigargan's got like a, a slight little scramble that you have to do over a over and like a bit where you're yeah, actually you just climbing. You just but it's really it. not like yeah. it's really not long, and and Tibrigargan's quite quick, but. Biwara is actually the biggest of the Glasshouse Mountains and that probably really? takes the longest and it's like, it's probably the most hard work. Right. Because um, it's, there, but it's distance. De- mm. yeah. yeah, and there's definitely a section where you sort of need to shimmy up rock face a little bit, but yeah. absolutely nothing like whatever the fuck. Uh, I've never, never, uh, never been there either I'm of them. I'm all about that in Gun Gun. Like, Mate, it is, it is, Major it is an awesome yeah. morning out. Like yeah, if, true. You, you, know, go, you go and do it. It's fucking packed. Everyone's doing it. Right. Okay. But it's, I, yeah, I don't know. Like We went on that. Tibro gets real packed. When I went to Biwara, it was it was good. We like, went to Gun Gun on the weekend. Right, right. That's, right. that's packed as fuck. Packed. Secrets yeah, right. well and truly out of yeah. it. So Gun Gun's the smallest, isn't yeah. it? It's just like a uh, nature so. walk. Yeah, it's yeah, a two point right. four. So that yeah. would explain why. And you sort of get there. up the top, but they've all they've got fucking stairs and shit. Right. See, I couldn't take the misses, and um, so I went with my cousin, um, his misses and mine, and um, yeah, we can't. 
I can't take my missus up too, bro. She's just, just won't do it. true. Not, yeah. not fit. <laughs> <laughs> no, she's fit as fuck, mate. Like she would smoke anyone fitness wise. Just, just the she phobia. Just, just the heart. Just that. There's this one point yeah. where it sort of just scares her. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. what I'm not keen I on. I saw me. a. Yeah. Um, I saw last time I was on Tibra, there were a group of um, young bulls, like probably you know, 19, 20 years old, like huge group of mates, and then um, they got to that first little climb over bit, and, dropping and, nuts. and then and one of them did. It's like I'll see his boy. I'll see you boys later. I'm not. I'm not going. They're like, what yeah. are you doing, man? Come on, like. Yeah. It's like, nah, nah. I'm not doing it. Yeah, so it's right. just you know, some people. Some it people, realistically, yeah. it freaks like, them out. But realistically, if you're going with somebody that has done it before, it's it's more realistic. Yeah, you got to know someone that's done it. But if you're at that point, there, there is a one point. If you look back and you fell, you'd be fucked. Mm. You yeah. would be. That's real. That's that's yeah. an honest. That you can be honest about that. Well, there was a dude that broke his back there like a couple of months ago. Yeah, I had to get airlifted out and right. shit. But he was like in his sixties or something. I think. Yeah, sure. fuck. Yeah. There was a place at Cedar Creek. Do you guys know where that is? Yeah, the waterfall. There's a couple of them. Yeah, that big waterfall. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. when we were young, we watched a kid jump off and break his back. Ooh. So there was a um, – Cedar Creek was my mate's backyard pretty much. Really? So there's a, there, was a, there was a retreat up the top. Yeah, I know the one. Right up the top. Yeah. And there was four ca- wooden oh, cabins. Okay. With, with, right. the, with the big, thick, like round-shaped logs out the front or whatever. Yeah, I know Yeah, the and ones. there's a um, – it was a courtyard in the middle. It was like so. There's four. There was four. It was like four massive cabins, right? Oh, okay, and a yeah, yeah. In the middle. It was an actual retreat, mm, and mm. Um, they one room, one one of those things was rented out. Anyway, my uh, really good friend of mine, a childhood friend, their family owned it, right? And so lived there. So we grew up out in Sanford and sort of just like Shit. out in the you know paddocks and climbing mountains and shit like that. Awesome. And um, on that. Yeah, on that like jump down there where everyone used to go. Yeah. After it would flood, you'd be okay. But um, normally you have to stand in a circle in the water where the rocks are. You got to land in the middle of your mates right. from that big one. Yeah, this guy didn't do it, and oh. we're down there going, "Don't jump, mate! Like, don't fucking yeah, do it!" Like yeah. we're sitting there watching, oh, and he horror. jumped in. Um, Bang! Hit the rocks. Well, it, the, the water, entry to the water was fine, but as he's gone down, he's hit his back. On the rock and oh. fucking broke his back and yeah, Fambos came and yeah, he became Jesus. a paraplegic and oh. fucked him up. Yeah, that's yeah. awful, man. Yeah, that's absolutely awful. horrible. That that in itself is because I've done a lot of that sort of shit my, caper myself as a um, as a young person diving, you know, not diving but jumping off bridges and out of I trees. Still do it all time. And, I still yeah, do time. Yeah, exactly. You know, but let's yeah. face it, boys do. You know, if you grow up around these parts, but I still enjoy it. Yeah. Oh, me too. Me <laughs> yeah. too. If I'm honest. I love a good yeah. bungee. Yeah. I, 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 I love jumping off something high too. It definitely gets the adrenaline pumping and and yeah. gets that fear fear going. But I like to know that I'm landing in deep. Yeah. Water. I was yeah. always. I felt like I was always pretty pragmatic about the way I would approach I anything. Too. I yeah. was like, no, no, I'm not going to do anything stupid. Mm. Probably the biggest jump that I ever did was out of um, the tree at. Uh, um, Gardner Falls up in Gardner's. up in Mullaney. That big one, the swing. Yeah. So so where the um so like much I think it's like much higher than where the swing was even tied. Yeah, yeah. Um yeah. and and it was like this sort climbing of climbing through the canopy. Climbing yeah. up this yeah. kind yeah. of slippery um The dangerous was the slippery climb. spiky the dangerous bit was yeah. the climb. The climb was fucking You could jump dangerous. off it all right after after like a good bit of rain. Because yeah. it was like for the first half of the jump, you were still going through canopy. So it was like shh. Yeah. Shh. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And then was, yeah. I watched a mate of mine because I did it in like just straight sort of pencil dive, like yeah, fucking yeah. heavy impact hitting the water, yeah. definitely. Um, but I watched a buddy of mine do it, and he's just through the air. He's starting to just like his weight's distributing like towards his shoulders, oh, and no. so he's just like his bum's coming up, and he's getting more and more hor- horizontal, and just like sort of came in still diagonally, but like enough to just fucking real bad back slap. And um and everyone was kind of mm. tended him for, for him to come up and he he was all sweet but uh, <laughs> yeah. you fuck do, do do you guys I know you guys do but do you follow that kook slams on Instagram at all What's that What's Oh kook it's slams? like uh, oh, people it's like there's kook? there's yeah. kook of the day which is like they take photos of you know guys wearing their weddies at restaurant at Denny's and shit like that <laughs> and. Um, <laughs> Like walking around with fins out, or you know, yeah, like yeah. got the convertible beamer with the nine six fucking. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> and then now they've got one called Kook Slams, fucking one of the best things on Instagram. But mm. <laughs> there was one the other day of this guy, and he's like 
got these two girls and they're on the top of a railway bridge, like presumably somewhere in the States or whatever. And then he's like with these two chicks in bikinis <laughs> yeah. and like three, two. And then as, as he's just about to jump up and they're doing like a three-way jump, he just lets go of their hands. <laughs> yeah. oh. And these two chicks like jump and they're sort of turning to have a go at him. But one of them, man, oh, oh. it's the, the worst belly flop you've ever seen because yeah. as she's turning, her legs have just come up as well and she's from gone horizontal. High. Yeah. And from just, like 18, oh, 20 feet. High. Yeah. Like, from high. high. Yeah. How, how he convinced – those two girls would have had some guts for oh, that guy man. to have oh. convinced them well, into doing yeah. that jump or well, they were really keen on him yeah because <laughs> yeah one seriously of them, yeah. he had a donger <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he had a donger uh, <laughs> that was a, that was at least a probably uh, a seven meter drop mm. you know like i mean so that that was a, a big jump and she did land just hard on just her iron his sword through the through his body he's like nah we'll <laughs> jump <laughs> <laughs> I, tr- I trust you billy <laughs> yeah we'll, <laughs> we'll jump <laughs> Shit, Billy would never do anything to hurt us. Yeah, 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 exactly, yeah. <laughs> bang! That was, it was fucking. I horrific. love him. <laughs> uh, oh, good so lord! We, we've got we've got a card this weekend of Mark Hunt versus Derek Lewis. Ooh, oh. we didn't even break down two twelve. Should we? Should we? Wasn't wasn't that shout a, that out? Wasn't that we... an outcome? Wasn't <sighs> that an outcome? Fuck me! Like Michael Bisping said that it legitimised the division, and I don't disagree. You know, like that 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 Jose Aldo sort of getting beaten by Conor McGregor, and then sort of almost like fair enough that performance against Frank, against Frankie was dynamic, but you know it it definitely didn't feel right. Jose being champion, considering he had sort of been beaten, and then the guy he had beaten just left the division you know so it was good to see max holloway step up and and you know and go on a big win streak and put on a performance like that just that was sick he's change, on a yeah. win streak isn't he changing changing was that the 11 guard. was it that was, 11 that was 11 it was yeah. 11 yeah mm. felt like a whole a changing of the guard for the whole division like jose got it like got clipped in 13 seconds wins the belt back like i thought he looked great against frankie like in that fight but 25 year old max Going 11 straight It's his division now But yeah. then The best part about it was For me as a huge Frankie Edgar fan If Jose wins that fight Frankie ain't getting a shot Like he probably wouldn't get His third crack Like straight off yeah. the bat They might give it to someone you Like Cub Frankie take it off him? Uh, mate, I think so Yeah I'm I, a, I, 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 Honestly I'm a big Frankie fan For sure yeah. Yeah. I like Frankie Edgar Again, Against He's Yair a workhorse man Against Yair Rodriguez Like that it, yeah. Frankie is still Every time you see him, he almost gets better and better and better. Like yeah. Yeah. Jose was an awkward matchup for him, so I think he, he was zero two against him. But everyone else, Frank, his Frank engine, is a beast. His engine is the he, he's the most efficient. Like it, he's and actual, it's, uh, he's fit, man. It seems yeah, that way that goes, Max man. that yeah. Max is as well. Fucking machine, yeah. 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 That yeah, ear performance was something else. Yeah, it's like yeah. Max, Max has got cardio as well. Like Max. Weathered the storm early in that fight against jo- like Jose looked great in that yeah. first round. Isn't man. he Ma- looked? Max, uh, isn't Max the only one that's ever done? Um, Done the distance with Connor, correct? Oh, yeah, yeah sorry. Yeah. He 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 tore his ACL in that fight though. Connor yeah. McGregor, like um, yeah, did, you know, d- in in his defence that you know he w- probably in his defence he probably would have knocked him out. <laughs> yeah, may, maybe so, but yeah. he was Max he was got youth some... on that chin though. That's the thing when exactly. they when yeah. they fought it. Max was probably 21, 22. Yeah, but Max is only twenty five. I'd, I'd, lo- I'd yeah. love to see the scary re- feet. I'd be... love to see the rematch. You know, like do you worry? Do you worry about forty five? Yeah, yeah. Do you worry about the um? I think about this a lot as a fighter. Is um, my new my new coach now, Jeff? He tells me because I've had such a like small amateur career, you know, a handful of fights, um, one mixed martial arts amateur, one boxing amateur, and four Thai boxing amateur, which is there's not many. Um, and I have been training for twenty seven years, but we're training hard for like fifteen. Mm. I always worried about going back at 29, you know, it's too late. Am I going to go back too late? Is it going to be, you know, have I sort of, am I, was I supposed to peak already? Mm. And um, I was broken down something the other day, which is a really good point. And you can look at it and there's different examples throughout the entire UFC of guys that peak young. Yeah. And guys mm. that peak totally. older. Totally. Totally. And the guys that peak older are ones that haven't taken too much damage. When exactly. They're young. Yeah. The guys that peak younger, um, they get in, they, they get it done, but then, yeah. you know, they've had so much damage in their career, they're starting to sort of willer off. And the older guys that can sort of take their time, have a little bit of longevity about it, 
have a little bit of a smarter sort of game For sure. plan. They sort of do the test of time. And, and I think that's a different a, a different training method that seems to be coming into particularly mixed martial arts anyway is, is that method of, you know, Robbie Lawler no longer sparring, you know, a, a while back and, and, you know, Donald C- Cowboy Cerrone has, you know, come out and said that he definitely doesn't spar anywhere near as more as, as much as he used to because you, you're right, it seems to be not so much like how old the person is but you get a window of being able to take damage and yeah. whether, whether that damage window starts at 20 and ends at 30 or whether like you're more like Daniel Cormier and it starts at, you know, mm. 32 and ends at 42, you know. Yeah. But then you get those freak examples of, um, of people, you know, like – Dan Henderson and, you know, Shogun who are and, and you know, all those sort of stuff who are just like have been doing it for... Dan's tw- the oldest, isn't he? 20 plus years, you know. Like, at, I mean, the, at the moment, Randy, Randy, Randy went to yeah. like 47, something like that. But, um, Fucking hell, 47? 40, 47 in like, mate, in that, in that fight against... Uh, Do you ever think that Randy Couture was juicing? Definitely. Yeah, yeah absolutely. absolutely he yeah, would have been. Back, Sorry, Randy. We just uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Chris listened to a podcast on uh, <laughs> on character defamation and what it actually like how you would actually constitute it in a court of law and we were like shit, uh, there might be some things here to consider for us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, <laughs> As it accusing people of uh, being <laughs> being on the gear which Just for the record, it yeah. wasn't an accusation. Yeah. I was very curious because he was yeah. in beautiful pis- peak physical he was. which I'm telling you you're not the first one that's no. thrown somebody under the bus for Roy's we pretty much do it every year <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Johnny Hendricks has a case against me man my, my fucking <laughs> I've thrown Johnny under the bus a few Post times post-USADA is yeah. pointed to a lot yeah, yeah, yeah. Mate, so many physiques and we like None of us have fucking ever laced up a glove, yeah. glove in any form of contest, bro. We just, we just, we just love, the yeah, like, we love the shit. We love the shit and generally interested in yeah. it and shit too. Like, it. dedicate so much of our time to it. But it's um, but that's the thing. It's easy to be sort of um, to be critical of physiques and shit like that in the environment because there is so many photos. Exactly. Like we we only looked at photos of Eric, Eric Silver. Silver the other day and stuff. So you can draw comparisons and shit. So we're not mad at it. But in terms of age, like. Randy, Randy Couture, yeah. Dan Henderson was what, probably forty five. Was he forty seven against Bisping? Well, but Dan was a Dan. Nah, Dan was Dan was all American. Fucking, there's no way he was probably mm. juiced. like he's one of those he's tough old. Just definitely, like, he's like he was Seems like a it. one of a kind sort but of. But he dude, was like. juicing. But it, well, he was juicing yeah. when it was legal. That he had so, that you know, TRT. Like, oh, he had that TRT. Yeah, he had that. Yeah, he had. Wasn't that a cloudy era? Yeah, it was a cloudy era. And when we look at look back at the sport in 10, 15 years' time, probably seem even more extreme that like the, the whole TRT era with guys getting exemptions and stuff. Where yeah. Now they've just seemed to have eradicated it like, as Entirely. much as possible, but there's still dudes getting popped around for all sorts of shit. Oh, but, um, shit John Jones? Yeah. 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 Precisely I mean, like... Really, really like dick pills. Mm. Come on, Anderson. Exactly. These, Anderson, boys, these two yeah. boys are uh, yeah. uh, diehard Anderson fans, man. Yeah. Uh, absolute diehards. Are. Yeah. I was legend. Absolutely, Legos. I thought, the, di- I the, thought the, di- the dick pill was probably an out for him as well. The like, goat, but yeah, let I, him, I didn't, let him I have didn't it. Like, that. I, I, like, let's just get Anderson on the juice and fucking let him go hard. Like <laughs> the guy was a machine. Just yeah. let him go. Let him the, have his glory there's, days. There's a guy. That's, How do you feel about that? Like, as as a fighter yourself and as a competitor, like, um, would you would you condone if the, if they were just like, all right, we uh, we're done our relationship with Usada and um, we're just going, you know, old school. Uh, you know, you know, I've thought about this. And um, I think there should be two divisions, and I think yeah. the same thing about the Olympics. Mm. Yeah, it'd so be I interesting. think juice, I, juices division. Just let them yeah. fucking. So it's an un- like the same with bodybuilding. There's yeah. a tested and there's yeah, an untested. That's true. That's true. Maybe like because it's I don't know. I look at um. You know, I sit on the fence with this. I think that I came from a rugby background and I've had influence from coaches of juicing. Yeah, uh, it's around football. I've been around it. Bro, I've done it. It's like, around mate, everything. I, it's I around was, everything. I was yeah. convinced as a teenager that to get to that level, you know, you had high level coaches pretty much saying, Hey, you know, I'm not gonna throw anyone on the bus here, but hey, no. you know, we don't care what you do in the off season. Mm. Just put that weight on. Yeah, exactly. And so when you're sixteen, seventeen, eighteen coming into that area, you're going, oh, okay, is that what it's gonna take? Because mm. you'd do anything to play footy for that team. Yeah, mm. right. So, you know, I was being scouted and things like that. And that's I went down that path. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and you know what? I'm not going to throw anyone under. But NRL players now are still juicing yeah. in the off-seasons. They sure. just do it in the off-season, get in and out. Some of them for allegedly. recovery. Some of allegedly. Them, allegedly. Allegedly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. no, I can't, I can't yeah. make any accusations. But 
Um, no one's name there. You're safe. No, but no you're, one's. Yeah. The, <laughs> put, it, put it this way. The, the, and as you say, man, it's, 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 it's the round. There's no fan. point us fucking like you, to all the fans that say it doesn't happen. I'm no. sorry. Exactly. It's no, happening. you're right. You look at some yeah, of these, the yeah. physiques on some yeah. of these boys out yeah, there after happening. preseason, and you're like, it's oh, for sure it is. If there's if there's room to cheat, it can happen. Like, exactly. And it's funny, like you touched on two divisions, Josie. There was um, Sports Illustrated once did a, uh, a survey through their magazine. Yeah. And it was something like 97% uh, unanimous vote, basically, for the question was pitched to its readers of, would you rather watch a clean person run 983 to win a gold medal or see someone on the juice run 943? Mm. Like, 97%, like, give me that 943. I was like, going to say, let's, would, let's, would see would what peak, let's see what peak same. performance we can get yeah. out of these people. And I'd be down as <laughs> and, fuck and for if that. there was no, like, listen to this, and this is going to, like, a lot of people may find this very controversial, but... If there was no juicing in any sports, no records would be being broken. Mm. Like look at yeah. all the records that have been broken. And then obviously sports is elevated and things are being done and like that whole Carl Lewis and Ben Johnson thing. Yeah. Mm. You he, can't, they you were can't, all doing it. You can't they say were all doing everyone, it, man. Yeah, like, you can't say that all records. It was country against country. It was like and my athlete needs to be the best. Yeah. We're going to juice him because on a world stage, our country needs to be winning the Olympics. Mm. Yeah, it was a political thing. It wasn't a an athletic thing. Yeah. It was like our 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 country needs to be the best. The Russians and the Chinese are notorious yeah. for it. Yeah. That was like uh, Victor Conte with that uh, yeah. the yeah. drug test over there. He's like, the, have you read his book? No, I haven't. No, but uh, I was I've took a real keen interest into the podcast, a couple of podcasts that he's been on because. Um, Growing up, I was mad into athletics. Like, yeah, I, yeah. always enjoyed watching track and field. Like, early, like, even watching, like, Donovan Bailey, like, yeah. winning 96 Atlanta 100 metres and shit. Like, going back that far into, like, enjoying sprinting and shit. And uh, no idea where I was going with that, bro. I was just fucking... <laughs> 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 no, I mean, what are we doing? Uh, no, P- PEDs and... P- Victor Conte. Yeah, Victor, Victor Conte. Conte. Thanks, bro. And, uh, he just added everyone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, he added he, everyone. He com- completely added everyone. And he was responsible yeah. for... Uh, the Tim, Barry Bonds. The, the Tim Montgomery project was like a thing that he got. And as you say, with political, they're like, US hadn't won uh, Olympic gold medal 100. So it's like, let's juice this guy up. And he went from something like 148 pounds to like 178 in the space of like fucking, gotta, and, gotta and, say, like six weeks. Like, and he's just looked jacked. Yeah. And, and, and ended fast. up popping. Ended up yeah. popping. Yeah. He was. Um, he was caught around the like similar time with Marion Jones and shit, but like yeah. the, Mate, as you say, you, it's you, right. Would, would anybody still watch the the natural Olympics? I don't think would it, they would. Would it no. fall by the wayside? Would. No. It wouldn't well, because if there's people running eights out there, like yeah. whether they're why would you and run, that's why would you watch ten? I don't yeah, know. Like, exactly. like who, who, yeah. no, and no offense to a lot of the athletics guys out here, but who watches athletics in Australia? Like, no mm. one's really got yeah, that keen right. interest to go yeah. watch Aussie guys at meets run 10-4 when we can get spoiled by Usain who's going to yeah. go 9-7. Yeah. However, yeah. If, yeah. Australia, if Australia had somebody who could run 9-7, you know, like, I mean, we would of tune course. in in our droves. Oh, yeah, of course. In our it's well, the Olympics, are, the Olympics are tailored to, to yeah. your country and what you yeah, do well in. Exactly. So, like, in yeah. other countries, they're not going to see half as yeah. much swimming as we see. Like, Ken- yeah. Kenyans are watching the 10K just fucking yeah, yeah, ha- getting yeah. lit. Not doing <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I kind of always have a little bit of a, I don't know. I feel like there's this um, sentiment around PEDs, um, which you could argue that a whole raft of things are, are considered PEDs as well. There's just at different sort of levels of. There's a level of it. But there is there is a, an element of hard work that you really can't take away from yeah. from somebody who who may be like adding, you know, some elements hormonally or whatever, but they're still busting their fucking Ooh. ass to get yeah. to the level they're getting to. So it's kind of like it's you a know, gra- it's a very gray area, man. It, it is, is, yeah. It because is. it is helping to get somebody to a level like athletically where they are able to perform those acts, whatever they may be, sort of thing. Yeah. yeah. But um problem and, and is not through not throughout hard work, but definitely obviously gives you an advantage over over a level playing field of people who sure. who aren't hormonally changing their On bodies. The same, so. Yeah. So I, it's 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 a um the way I look at it is this. If it's not inside a sport where others aren't doing it, then keep it out of it. Mm. Like if you want to fucking get on it, then make sure your opponent's on it. Yeah, like I so that's how I see it. Yeah, like, level yeah. playing field. Level yeah. playing field. Fair fight. Yeah. 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 yeah, fair fight. So, you know, like from someone that's come from that background and being around that rugby sort of background, you know, you know, I watch some of my idols 
growing up with and learning about what they used to do. Mm. Some mm. of my idols playing football. Yeah, yeah, So yeah. I was like, well, fucking my favourite players are doing this. Mm. I'm doing oh, it. exactly. You know, yeah, so, yeah. you know, you have that mentality, but then when you come back into the fight game, you realise, okay, it's, it's a completely different playing exactly. field. Exactly. If your guy was on it and you weren't, then that's not a fair fight. Yeah. Whether there's more skill or not, yeah. it doesn't matter. Yeah. Change, it's just, it changes your it changes your biology. Mate. It, it like, does. It really I mean, does. there's no more perfect example of that than the uh, Antonio Bigfoot silver fight versus Mark Hunt in <laughs> Brisbane, which I think you boys might have been there for. No, man, no, we're overseas right, then. Right, yeah, right, yeah. viewing so though. I'm watching that definitely. in a room overseas. Like, fuck, Br- it would be uh, We there. were there for Mark Hunt. Um, Frank Mir. Frank Mir. Right. Yeah, that was a good yeah. fight. But yeah, I mean, you know, Bigfoot Silva, you know, got the the needle of of TRT, which that was a draw that fight. Yeah, was it? Was <laughs> didn't a dr- he? But didn't he? Wasn't his issue TRT though? He, yeah, he, he had to got, have it. <coughs> he actually has it. Gigantism. Gigantism. Yeah, yeah, exactly. He so you can is it gigantism? What? No, uh, no maybe there's, yeah. there's some sort of like testosterone thing there with yeah. him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You're thinking like Ken Griffey Jr. <laughs> off the sixth <laughs> block, drinking that nerve tonic and shit. <laughs> it's like a party in my mouth and everyone's invited. <laughs> Just his forehead's real yeah, big yeah. and shit. <laughs> Was that the baseball episode? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah the plant softball there, yeah. <laughs> but it, Do you want to know the dirty secret? Do you want to see me suck one? Suck dingers. If you're not a Simpsons person, then you know you get should, the fuck you, out. Yeah, yeah, you shouldn't yeah. be listening yeah. in the first place. Before fucking, Family yeah. Guy, when Unfriend we got old us. enough, yeah, <laughs> Simpsons yeah. was the shit, man. Yeah, fucking I, absolutely. So yeah, who, who, in roundabout way, we we went a long way around it. But so USC Auckland, <laughs> who, who, who have you got? For the, <laughs> for the main event, we got there. Yeah, we got, we there. got there. We got there. <laughs> Fuck man, it's close for me. I'm, I mate. I might even honestly give Derek. I might even take Derek Lewis, Black Beast. Yep. Really? Yep. For, by, by what for, knock, knockout? Yeah, obviously. I think I think those two those two guys can bang. But he's probably he's Kip, by Kimura. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> go go go, Plata for uh, Lewis. <laughs> like, uh, like real, yeah. I'm on Twister. Hunt. Uh, right, yeah. <laughs> Mark, Mark Mark Hunt by Twister. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Toe lock. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you'd have to be a MMA oh, fan yeah. to know what the Definitely, fuck we're yeah, talking yeah. about here. But anyway, yeah. um, I'm I'm Mark Hunt, man. I just I still like the dude. I just I like his attitude. He can't, yeah, like yeah, him, yeah. He's he's fucking legend, bro. and he is a legend. Guy the guy's MMA. a legend in the sport. So I I just always if it's not a if it's a, if it's not an Australian or an, like. I'll always go for either a Pommy or a Brit. Yeah. You know, like, I mean, you know, a Scot, an Irish or especially, an especially because, or a Kiwi. Especially you know? because Travis Brown had Derek Lewis hurt early, you know, so – and, and yeah. Mark Hunt can definitely throw heavier leather than Travis Brown can. So yeah. if Travis Brown had him rocked and he had him badly rocked in that first fo- in that first round of theirs, yeah. you know, I, I think he can – he can Mark Hunt can definitely this, put him away. Are these guys – what weight is this? Sharper. That's 85. That's 85. Oh, that's Dan Kelly. He's Dan, coming over a win against Rashad. He looked just 13 and 1. Yeah. I, 13 I, and 1, the long lost dumb. Just grittiest. <laughs> but I, mate, I honestly thought uh, Rashad was going to come out and uh, turn him into a highlight reel. But this, Dan Kelly is so gritty and determined. And he yeah. comes out with every Dude. joint strapped to the absolute he is. He hill. Does. Mate, like, something like 37, 38. He's held together with strapping yeah, you're tape. Right. But How old is he? 37, 38. Like and he's he, been to uh, about. Two or three Olympic games for judo yeah. for Australia. So and he and he comes out looking with the, the full dad bod, and, you know, yeah. gray gray hair, half that gray there hair says differently, shit, but like, he has yeah, been I mean, critiqued he, for that in the yeah, past. But yeah, so, um, yeah, yeah. Okay, so fucker, that's that's really cool. I haven't heard of him. Yeah, he, I mean, he came through. Uh, we've seen him. Fight, on, yeah, we've been to. When did he first a start of in the now. UFC? Oh, he's probably had. Know, a, he came man. through tough. Like he came through tough. Right. Uh, maybe smashes like the season with Rob Whitaker. But yeah, gotcha. Came. Did his uh did his ACL on the house and so came in? But see, one, look, two, three, four, he's got five. he beat that shoe face like that sh- Antonio Carlos Jr. He tapped Gary Tonin at that uh, Meta Morris event like right. for those jujitsu players out there and shit. But wins over Kamozzi like Kamozzi's gritty as fuck. He's a, like he's a veteran. So, but I, Derek Derek Brunson is uh. Fucking tough. He's difficult an elite. To count up, he's right. an elite, an elite striker, Derek Brunson. Yeah. You know, so it really is that you know Dan Kelly with the the judo and the wrestling background. So you how know. old was he when he entered the UFC? I'm gonna say 33, 34, yeah, something right. like that. Would have yeah. been a late starter. What we were talking about before, yeah. potentially. Good on him. I'm gonna follow this dude. 
Yeah, yeah. So that's Sunday. Especially, especially now that the Aussies are starting to get a little bit of a showing in it's it. It's about now, time, mate. Look, it Rob was Whitaker, look, it was shout out, brother. Yeah. yeah. Fucking all for you, man. Yeah, like win yeah, that, win that strap. Support, fuck yeah. Knock support, your man. well the fuck out. Because his backgrounds are Maori and Aboriginal, yeah. Something like uh, that. Is it really? Thing? Like, he's definitely Maori, obviously because yeah. the tats. But yeah, yeah. Was, was, I thought it was. I thought he had the. Uh, I could be wrong, man. I could have just maybe he is, man. Maybe he is. No, I mean, pff, yeah. I wouldn't know either. Well, he's an Aussie either way. Yeah, he's exactly. Aussie, yeah, so. he, he takes the flag in with him well, and yeah. stuff. And the other day, somebody was saying, like, apparently at school, he was just like, uh, he was notorious in his younger days as well as yeah. you who, just didn't fuck with. Who told me that? Yeah, yeah someone know. Someone was like, yeah, no, I know. Um, you know how when uh, you were growing up, there was always just yeah. that sort of like, he might have been from another school or somebody that you'd never heard of and they just had this mystique to him, but everybody knew their name, like from different schools, like, oh, don't fuck with such and such, man. Like, mm. or, you know, like... Uh, and like, all sort of hearsay back then too, where it might have just exactly. taken one, one, blue, one, one blue at a party and yeah, it's like, yeah. you know what, that's so true. But then when you realise some of those have been hyped up, I had one of those with a... Actually, I, I don't know if... He, he probably will never hear this. His, <laughs> nick, his nickname was Shorty. He was a short dude, yeah. but he like he had this fucking reputation in in North Northside Brisbane. Everyone knew who Shorty was. He was like this guy. He was like this drongo fucking skatey dude that would hang around with all these bad dudes, and you know they're all fucking smoking weed. And this is when we were young, so early high school days, right? He was like out of school, um, you know, maybe eighteen, but never really went to school properly and shit like that. Anyway, this he just had this crazy rep. Um, him and a couple other dudes, other dudes I won't name because they are pretty badass. Um, but he just had this really crazy reputation about just fucking everyone up. And one day I saw him, I saw him at Fernie Grove Skate Park and I was 14 at the time, 14, cocky, black belt, didn't give a fuck. Nothing happened, but I was just like, is that, is that it? Is that him? Is that, is that the little dude, the little mm. skatey dude there, the skinny little skater dude that I've been scared of for like two, three years because everyone's been hyping them up. I was like, oh, okay, get the fuck out and, of here. And that, that'd be the sort of the, I suppose that'd have to be the, the fighter mentality in its essence, wouldn't it? Is that, that this guy won't beat me. You know, like, I mean, I've got superior skills to this guy in, in terms of combat, you know, and, and I mm. have sized him up and, you know, like, and I'll get on a scale and weigh in and, you know, look at him and, and say, yeah, you know, like, I'm going to fuck, fuck you up tomorrow, man. Like, I think you know, if you don't, um, I think if you don't analyse, um, you probably shouldn't compete. It's probably like a. It's probably like a. Uh, there's there's a way to. Um, there's a way to look at someone, and then there's a way to look at something, so a situation. So, I think if you just study martial arts because you just love martial arts on it on itself. Um, you know, you might not ever be in a confrontation. Exactly. Yeah. You, know, you might Heaps not ever. Don't. Yeah. A lot. A lot GSP of them don't. GSP wouldn't be out getting in fucking fist fights yeah, yeah. on the weekend. <laughs> yeah. you know? like, well, and he yeah. was bullied. Uh, so yeah. You know I mean? Big so time. Like, big time. So, some people still, even at that high level, don't like the confrontation. Mm. So it just it varies, and I guess you yeah. sort of got to realize what sort of person you are. Yeah. Me, I don't. I actually don't like getting in fights. Yeah. I yeah. don't. I've always found trouble. I've always been in a bit of mischief and. And shits happen, but I actually don't like getting in the fights. Yeah. You know, off, off my off my last win, after I sort of saw the dude, I was like, oh, fuck, I felt really bad. Because I stupidly spoke to him before the fight and he was a super nice guy. Yeah, yeah. He right. was so polite. He was so friendly. He was very well-mannered. And right. I was the same because I believe in being like a professional about everything. Yeah, yeah. But it, that was the worst thing was to talk to him. I almost wanted to just fucking hate him so I could get in there. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's really hard. It's a really hard connection. thing. It's a really yeah. hard thing. They've, they've criticized those fights in the UFC before where, you know, where guys, I'm trying to think of an example, but the guys sort of, you know, come out and they're almost too courteous of each other. And, you know, like they'll, you know, throw a few punches and then they'll touch gloves. And then they'll throw <laughs> yeah. a few punches and then they'll touch gloves. And it's like, no, 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 no. Like, you're, you're in there for combat, you yeah. know? Like, I mean, See, I never got that when the bell goes. Yeah. It's after. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Afterwards, I'm like, oh, yeah. fuck, that was horrible. Yeah, for sure. I guess, I guess it was it was probably just my, with my kickboxing and my boxing fights. Um, didn't really matter because, you know, like... But just when when there's the gloves on and there's grappling involved, like my first ever MMA fight, it was it was really like it was so unique and it was so. It's a different type of adrenaline. I'm yeah. telling you right now, like you know, and I've only had one of those. Yeah, you know, I've trained on some good dudes, but 
you know, the guys that are fighting at that elite high level, you know, that's impressive because mm. it's so it's so uncomfortable and so confronting when you're <laughs> under someone and they're punching or you're on top of someone. Yeah. Like it's a, diff- it's a different did, story. Did you have to do it with like our, our friend who's been on the podcast before, shout out Justin, like has, has done an MMA fight and he had to... What, what what was it? He had to. It? There was classes to his to his ami. Yeah, my first one. Oh. So my first yeah. ever one yeah. was Shinpaz. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah. I yeah. didn't want him. The guy, other guy, wanted him. That's right. Okay. Justin right. was in the same spot. Our mate. Right. He's like, no, I didn't. I'm, I didn't care. I wanted to do the full. Th- I wanted. To, I would go full Experience. elbow straight yeah, away. Like, yeah. If you're going to learn it, like, yeah. Rory, learn it Rory McDonald. So, yeah. <laughs> so like competition wise, what's your sort of like? Uh, are you you're still have you got an upcoming fight or are you? What's your sort of record like with MMA fighting? Even in even in sort of C so class I only ever had like one that. amateur MMA fight. Okay, yeah. I right. want to go back. I'll, I'll go back and hopefully have a couple of amateurs. But I don't really want to fuck around, man. Like yeah, I'll just, like, yeah. Exactly. And that's, I want to com- fight and that's coming that are, back to the the competition thing for you. It's about like the the it, interest in martial arts. It has been. It's been um. It's been a funny experience lately because um I trained in integrated martial arts for a while and I was very lucky to train under like Adrian and Adrian Pang and Dan Higgins and. Uh, Steve Compton and I saw, I learned a lot about the sport because I'd never really did any MMA before those dudes. Um, but I still never found that passion for it. Yeah, like right. I, I, I learn MMA because I train, I train under Ian Jacobs. For like yeah, I know. We, we, we've tried to get him on here. We, we'd love to I'll have get him it. on and have a chat like if, Mate, if he's, he's willing to do it. He's yeah. family. He'll get on. A, a, ah, a, the powerhouse. Yeah. Love like to get have on. on. A, a, a good friend of the uh, the podcast, Chris Birch, too. Shout out, Birchie. We'll <laughs> Birch. We'll, Birch is we'll, one of my closest mates. We'll, we'll get you on eventually, brother. But like, let's, um, get, let's get Birch, yeah. me and Ian on. Definitely, yeah, man. Yeah, let's get him on. Let's get him on. There are a couple of good cats. We definitely love Birch to get him on. is a good friend of mine, too, Yeah, man. yeah he's, so, a, he's a crazy cat. So I, I've, I've known He would Birch do well on Chris, a podcast. Chris, man. bad boy Birch for anybody uh, yeah, listening. Yeah, yeah. tough motherfucker. Sure dog that shit. Tough motherfucker. And if you're going to go out and party... Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> allegedly, There's that allegedly. defamation <laughs> you, call, you call Chris Birch If you want to go and have a big night You call Birchie yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fuck me uh, so, so Love true. that dude yeah, But anyway He's a good guy He's a good guy So I trained under Ian for a long time yeah, So nice. at 15 I met Ian Anybody um, that doesn't know what we're, who we're talking about, Ian Jacobs. Three-time um, world champion. Yeah, three-time world champion, kickboxing, like kickboxing, you know, champion. Like at one stage held the, um, you know, the world's fastest knockout record at seven seconds. You know, yeah, like, I, think, I mean, yeah. uh, it just, you know, a re- really, really impressive dude who, who resides out of Brisbane and, you know, we, we'll get you on eventually. Well, mate, we'll get brother. him on, mate. Yeah. Don't worry about that. He's, um, so, I, you know, I was thankful, you know, I was very thankful to – be taught under Ian. Mm. So all my striking where it is now is Ian. Nice. So I um I learned under him for on and off for about 10 years because I was training at a powerhouse and then I ended up teaching just some um, public kickboxing classes there for a little while. And um, he was the one that pushed me to do MMA because integrated were upstairs above us and uh, you know where powerhouse building is. It's yeah. Up there. Yeah. yeah. So the integrated boys were upstairs. Right. And I always used to just hear fucking chaos, man. So it was like, it sounded like bulls running and like the roof was going to cave in. And I was like, what the fuck is happening? <laughs> I'm downstairs doing a women's kickboxing class. Getting, <laughs> getting them to do squat punches. <laughs> and I hear fucking chaos upstairs. So I always used to pop my head up and I was just like, wow, like that's... That's Full MMA, on. like yeah. that's that's hectic. Like these guys are tackling and fucking punching each other, and yeah. you know this is the real deal. Um, so I, you know, I met a mate of mine, Nelson, and Adrian Pang through there. So you know, Nelson's a good friend of mine too. And so I ended up just chatting to those dudes all the time. Nelson would always come down and check out the women's kickboxing class, mm-hmm. and I'd always get them doing certain <laughs> exercises when they came down. <laughs> <laughs> and then I would sneak up to the. Um, to the integrated class and just sit in the corner and just sort of fuck yeah it, check it just out just check it out that'd be so sick mm. it was amazing and you know I always got to see the pros so I got mm. to see how it was really done sick um, and so I was like you know that's a pretty that's some pretty cool shit so Ian pushed me towards it because yeah. at the time Powerhouse was sort of backing down and he was sort of doing off other things with boxer and all that sort of stuff so he's like why don't you go do MMA and I said oh, I don't know how to fucking do jiu-jitsu or any of that shit like I've got I got no idea. What am I supposed mm. to do there? So um, he goes, oh, "No, you'll be right." So I spoke to Adrian about it, and I don't know if Adrian Payne was stitching me up or not, because we sort of we knew each other. He's sort of family friend and all that sort of stuff. So I was like, "Oh, you know, he's, he's, he was a fucking good dude." 
And um, but I don't know if he's setting me up because obviously I had a rugby background at the time. They knew yeah. I was a footy player, so yep. he goes, "Oh, just come up and do a one of the sessions, just like footy, mate. Just tackle him and and punt and box." Yep. So I was like, "Oh, I can't be that hard," because he sort of taught me. And I went in there my first grappling session. And I still remember it, man. And I was fucking big, Dan. I was yep. solid. I was lifting heavy weight. I was about ninety kilos, mm. and um, I went up against this dude. Uh, they call Pacquiao, uh, little Greg, and um, he'd be 20 kilos lighter than me, man. Yeah. And it was just wrestling and takedowns and all that sort of stuff, but I was just getting folded in yeah, half. Yeah, exactly. I was yeah. getting folded in half. I had no idea what I was doing. I was using trying to use so much strength. I'd get a couple of people down that weren't that experienced Yeah. from footy, yeah. and I'd wrestle them, but anyone that knew what they were doing yeah, was just exactly. ragdolling me yeah. and just folding me up, and I was just like, okay, I've got to learn this stuff. Mm. I need to learn how to do whatever these guys are doing exactly. because I know nothing. Yeah. I was a karate black belt. I had a good striking background. I went up there like fairly confident and it was very humbling. I was like, yeah, okay, yeah, I need to be learning this stuff. Yeah, yeah, Rogan, Rogan talks a lot about that in terms of, you know, his his origins in, in Taekwondo, which is obviously extremely, you know, kicking based and, and all that sort of stuff. And mm. then when he sort of moved into the, the Muay Thai sort of realm and, and just realising that, you know, he completely didn't have hands and, yeah. you know, people were just teeing him off in the face and... And then, you know, moving into the jujitsu stuff where people would just, you know, like take him down and submit him and, you know, like he, you know, talks about that you just realise that you're so helpless unless you're good everywhere, you know. And it was so confronting for me because I've always been a confident lad Mm. Um, and to just have a little Asian dude just, you know, obviously we weren't punching and kicking but, you know, the whole jiu-jitsu and yeah. wrestling side things, I was just like, this guy's really fucking good. And yeah. I, and he's, he's ragdolling me. Yeah, and he's yeah. so much lighter than me and he's just making it look easy. I yeah. Mean, I need it. And, I, and I actually found jiu-jitsu quite challenging more than most. Yeah. Because of, I was really good at wrestling though. Wrestling was my thing. So because you're you know, a footy player. Used yeah, to the collision. Like, well, you went from for the that age fucking of six. double leg at that, uh, from the at age that of early six. fight. From the age, yeah, fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah straight for it. <laughs> so from the age of six, it was like I knew how to tackle, wrestle. I was tackling big islanders. I had a good scramble. Mm. So wrestling was always good. But because I had that aggressive mentality, you can't have that when you're learning jiu-jitsu. You've got to slow everything down. Yeah. You've got to take your time. Conserve it's energy. not about strength. It's about learning your body and the movement. And I'm still a very basic jiu-jitsu practitioner. I I'm not, I'm not, I'm, don't even have a belt. Mm. Like I don't rank. I've just trained for on and off for years and I mastered my, my own basics. For me, I want to stand up and strike and I want to defend jiu-jitsu well. Yeah. I don't yeah. really want to be on the ground trying to mm. be a technical practitioner against a brown black yeah. Brown or a black belt yeah. I don't have any interest in that yep. um, But I have an interest In just being able To have some form Of movement on the ground Where mm. I can simplify everything I can maybe nullify Some some of the movement And strike Yeah And is that mainly Out of just like An interest for learning A martial art Like it, it's more Obviously as a martial artist Who's done previous ones Is that mainly Just out of like The the You know The interest in, in Learning something new I, I think it's actually become a necessity right so i realized um i was i was very um humbled by my first experience with mixed martial arts yeah so i then realized you know i consider myself a martial artist i need to be learning all of it yeah you know so i it's need out to have an interest yeah it was it yeah, was 100 yeah. percent, and still is an interest yeah like for me competition is just where i can sort of really test where I'm at. The yardstick. Yeah. The yardstick, exactly. you know. You exactly. know, then I can go back to the drawing board and try new things and, you know, I've changed my training and I changed the way I look at martial arts and the way I train and you try and learn blueprints from other champions and you take it away and I dissect it. You know, I've been a trainer for so many years. And run us run us through like a standard training week of what you what you go through at the moment. Like is there a, obviously a strength and conditioning like component because you look fairly like, you know, like you're pretty jacked. You definitely fucking do strength training. I've actually stopped a lot of my so-called like any sort of weightlifting. I've recently actually cut 13 kilos. Really? 13? What do, what do you weigh now if you don't mind me asking? Um, I'm about 77. 77? Yeah. Oh, yeah, right yeah. on. So I, I want to walk around 75. Yeah, yeah. And then eventually try and get down to lightweight. Yeah, right on. Yeah. Right on. Just because um, I've actually realized now when my muscles come up, I've got really good reach. Yeah, yeah true. Really long arms. Have you ever had it measured? 
No. I still no, done any yeah, of yeah, yeah. I guess it'd yeah. just be stick your arms out to the sides and, you know, yeah, get once someone to grab sort of a tape measure. Take the muscle suppose. off your body, like you realise how far you yeah. can come out. Yeah, so it's I'd, crazy. From when you're, when you're really bulky and you're muscly, you've only yeah. got about that. But then when you're. You realise yeah. once yeah. your whole body stretched. Well, the, ra- the range of motion for that like bodybuilding hypertrophy stuff is relatively short because you're useless. trying to generate yeah. a lot of um, it's useless. You know, like uh, tension on the muscle, yeah. like so. But then when you do those full gymnastic extensions where the shoulder and everything comes forward on like yeah. you know a, a push or a pull, or full whatever, range like, of motion through mm, through the it, really the, get the joints involved. Yeah. When you start fucking with joints, like I've I've done a little bit of dabbling on like rings and things like that and having to sort of condition your wrists and elbows yeah and like you actually have to properly stretch your wrists do, out do prior. push-ups on the tops of your wrists and stuff like yeah, that yeah and definitely yeah. warm up for that yeah. one fam <laughs> yeah. i now do like a lot of um, <laughs> i've been it's really funny i've tried to change i've changed my whole approach because as soon as the weight started coming off i started moving completely differently yeah. I went back to how i moved when i was younger same and oh, i was very comfortable um, and yeah relaxed so you, what the, in terms of strength training what would be your strength training like do you are you a sort of you I know jump, d- dumbbells and barbells sort of dude or not are you anymore more like no. kettlebells yeah. and you know um, like um oh, i'm body weight so yeah I'm nice all, calisthenics all, and yeah, shit yeah all body yeah, weight. yeah and um so you do a bit of balance sort of stuff on your instagram as well yeah like, yeah, oh, lots yeah. Of balance shout out now. to shout out to josie's instagram i was actually fucking la- laying in bed on um sunday Where's morning this going, bro? When, we, <laughs> 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 when we got the um when we got the uh confirmation of uh josie coming on um and I was fucking feeling lazy as fuck to go to the gym, man. I was like, oh, I'm supposed to do a session today, but I can't be asked. And so I was like, oh, I'll do a bit of research on this fellow that's coming on the podcast. And then I was like, fuck, man, get my lazy ass up, <laughs> <laughs> fucking go to the gym, son. What is that Insta, brother? Uh, it's just Josie, uh, Josie underscore James. Nice, yeah, man. Yeah, I'll have, yeah, to, I'll have yeah. to fucking throw you a follow for <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm all about that sort of Probably stuff. Probably have like good fun. 25, 30,000 by the week, end of the weekend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good plug. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've, um, yeah. it's been good because uh, I've come from a um, my, I'd say, trade for the past sort of 10 years on and off has been Obviously, sales and marketing, but I've been a personal trainer for 10 years. Mm. Um, I've done strength conditioning courses and been, nice. I've studied the body. Yeah. I've tried to, you know, really immerse myself into every style as well. So I've done the powerlifting, the bodybuilding, you know, I've done the, the fitness thing. I've done yeah, it all. Yeah, nice. sort of piecing everything together. Exactly. To find yeah. the most sort of perfect little system for me. You know, mm. I don't really need a strength and conditioning coach to tell me how to train. I know how to train. Mm. So, and I can motivate myself to do that. So, what I've sort of been doing now is just getting my body as flexible as possible, getting my balance perfect, um, working on all speed and accuracy work, um, and really adapting that sort of movement mentality and just trying to do unique ways of training and, and getting the body efficient. Once I took all that muscle off, so I've been dieting like crazy for the past sort of three or four months really taking 13 kilos off my body really yeah. so 13 kilos of like because you muscle. to look at you look at a fairly lean dude so yeah, you, I, I know you'd be talking about muscle there yeah which was um really really hard i've i had to a lot of that i started through my fasting uh, yeah. and then i had to pull my protein back and sort of force my body to go catabolic why, and why do that man when you're 90 kilos and you're 5'9", yeah, and right, you want to go okay. back and spar and yeah, do some kickboxing true. and all that sort of stuff, you realise, one, you're wasting too much um, oxygen. Yeah. Um, and two, it's just like, you're just not, you're not quick. You know, you've you, you got some power and if you land one, but yeah, that's about it, man. Yeah. Unless you're going to bang with the big boys... Um, at five nine and ninety kilos of muscle, which was unflexible and probably Shit. not efficient. There's exactly, no point. yeah, that's it. It it's was good for rugby. Mm. It was good for footy. I had a perfect footballer's build. Yeah, um, but for a martial artist at five nine, it's useless. Yeah, yeah. it's exactly. absolutely useless. And that's a really good it's way of breaking discipline. that down. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It had nothing to do with like I, I enjoyed being big, man. It was awesome. Mm. Like just. Being strong, I always life's too short to be big, bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, 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 I fucked that up. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> life's too life's short to be small. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I did it all. I experienced it, um, but I also got a lot of injuries out of weight training. Yeah, me too. So now I've sort of 
of I do a lot of hanging. So every day I yeah. hang for seven minutes. Yeah, hanging's the old. So all, yeah. all together I hang for seven minutes every day. It's open up my joints, my shoulders. Yeah. Um, good for your back and shit too. Yeah, really yeah. good for your spine yeah. and everything. And what I also do is just do a lot of stretching and balance training. Yeah. I do a lot of um, wrist and hand exercises. Right, so I'm, I start right. strengthening my elbows and knees and ankles. Do you do, do, can you like do a planche and shit like that? What's a planche? Oh, okay. So um, it's sort of like a gymnastics move where you sort of like just like have straight arms and like, well, we could probably bring it up on the screen. Out. But like, um, yeah. Sort it's of like on a, on a like pommel horse sort of like the yeah, old one. Yeah. I, but yeah, I'll, I'm, I don't I'll, know the names. I'm yeah, I'm, I'm, to, I'm totally into um into that style of you know movement based training as well. It's 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 the best way to go for sure. Yeah, there you go. That, that's a planche there, brother. Oh yeah, yeah. That's pretty advanced. That guy's yeah. on his fingers. That's, that's high level. Extremely, <laughs> extremely. That might be Photoshop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Be Photoshop. Let me show you what yeah. that looks like. Yeah, oh, dead I don't set. Think I'm, um, <laughs> dead set. A plan a planche is even on its own is extremely I, high level. I dabble with a little bit of gymnastics. Oh yeah, nice. For anyone that isn't obviously looking at what, oh, <laughs> done, it, done it again, done it again. Check, check out his inst- check out his Instagram, man. That, that's that's really really impressive. But Good. that that yeah. was what, what, doing, yeah, what was are you doing, doing there? Nobody stuff. knows what what's um, going on yeah. there. Yeah. Real I'm descriptive there, Chris. Um, <laughs> doing, pretty, okay, so <laughs> like an, an, an L sit, an L sit is pretty much like a. Um, I, think, I think that's what it's called. I don't yeah. even know what it's called, man. Oh, okay. I just watch it and then I go, I'll try that. Yeah, yeah right yeah, on, yeah, right yeah, on, yeah, right yeah. on. Yeah, so and if I can't do it, then I'll keep trying until I get it. Yeah, yeah, no, that's how that's how I started doing things. Yeah, yeah, I went on a campaign for that like um probably last year. Myself, where I, was, I really started trying to, you know, put time into learning all the different like gymnastics moves like that. Yeah, and and it's cool because you know, like I mean, it does take progression and it does take time, and then eventually you hit it and you're like, oh shit, that yeah, was that like, was good. Yeah, yeah, that was good. Yeah, like, yeah quick, yeah, take yeah. a picture. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> video that shit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I want to chuck this off on my own stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was the same, man. God, I, was, yeah. I was the same. You go, yeah. Chris is. You uh, Chris holes. at. Chris underscore Stuart 14 yeah. fucking yeah, yeah, yeah. flagpole in the profile picture. Yeah. You got sure. one of those side fucking... Uh, <laughs> yeah, brother. Yeah, fuck yeah. 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 No, yeah. I, got, I, got I love it. Hit a, hit a flagpole or I can... Real strength. <laughs> yeah, I real strength. Should we, oil, should we oil each other up and start taking pictures? <laughs> <laughs> I've, I'm already half chubbed here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> second you mentioned that flagpole, I'm like, yeah, yeah, what's up, boy? No, yeah. no one knows what the fuck yeah. we're talking yeah. about. Yeah. No, I was <laughs> like, yeah, bro, yeah, yeah, yeah. man. What, what on earth is a flagpole? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah, bro, uh, bro, bro, bro. doesn't yeah. know is uh, yeah. someone that's holding their arms. Like um, straight, straight and then just, inverted. Yeah. And your, your stomach is... You're like, the flag, yeah. effectively. Horizontal. Yeah, horizontal. And you, horizontal. You, and you, Very you, impressive. Yeah. I've yeah. actually never tried one. Nah, you'd probably be alright, man. I mean, like like all gymnastics maneuvers, it's, it's all technique. technique. It's techie. Yeah. Yeah, it is technique. technique. Yeah, it's so absolutely. Technique. Working that point of the fulcrum point and the balance. Right. Yeah. So that why I started figuring out mobility was more important than flexibility. Yeah, mm. I agree with that so entirely. Slowly, obviously, you got to have flexibility mm. to have good mobility, but you don't have to be able to do the splits to have great mobility. No. Yeah. Of yeah course. Exactly. So yeah. once I started yeah. realizing, okay, well, you know, I don't need to be cranking the splits to be the best. Yeah, like exactly. Gotta get yeah. those splits, man. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Even though right now I'm better completely head kick, obsessed. Like. <laughs> I'm obsessed with the splits. Really? And I practice them you, every day. Yeah, as a it's martial good. artist, you'd yeah. have pretty good flexibility, yeah. I'll bet, though. Yeah. Well, now the weights come off, I've got great flexibility. Right. When the weight was on, it was fucking horrible. How close to the splits would you be? Oh. Nude up, oh, nude up, bro. Yeah. <laughs> where's, that, where's that coconut oil? Like? <laughs> yeah. Is that 10 inches? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking about off the ground. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's impressive, man. I'm nowhere near that. Like, I'm, I'm more like, buddy, <laughs> fucking... <laughs> How many inches are you? Half a meter. Sitting at a good 16 inches. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, Tommy Lee. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I was um but I, I sort of how I look at my martial arts is is really in a different way. And when I try and talk to people about it, it's it's actually hard to explain because I talk to a lot of guys that they're fighters. Um I wouldn't call myself a fighter. I'd never really call myself a fighter. I'd call myself a martial artist. Yeah, first. yeah. Because if I couldn't ever compete again, I'd still be practicing martial arts. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I, you know, I get, some people go, I, I can't fight her again. 
like if a boxer, you know, an old retire, well, I can't fight ever again. I'll mm. just retire. Yeah. Well, I'll go back to fucking exactly. Martial arts, he, so. heaps, right. heaps of pro surfers and all that sort of stuff don't yeah. don't make it on the tour, but still surf their whole life. You yeah. Know? Like, I mean, it's just something it's they love doing. Yeah, exactly. It's so something you love there's doing. There's lots of dudes who are um, sponsored, like to be soul surfers and shit. They just do. Yeah. They Rob, just do Rob DVDs shout out, and shit. Shout out Rob, Rob Machado. Rob yeah. Machado. Who's the other? Rasta. Dave Rasta. Yeah. Dave Rastovich. Yeah. So what they just they just sort of chill. So don't compete. Don't compete on the tour, but they're fucking guns. Mm. And they get like sponsored And they just get photos They get those magazines and all Yeah Absolutely exactly. yeah. Yeah. RBCA's like wouldn't fuck, that be, We'll sell some magazines With this fun? motherfucker oh, Wouldn't that be more sure, cruising? Man. Wouldn't that be more cruising? That's why like When Mick did Different like, strokes for different gap, folks Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Rob, Rob Machado in Southern California Would be a god You know Like he, he'd de- yeah, right. walk those Pretty streets sure he almost Lives in Bali now eh? Really? He, yeah He like I'll, owns a, a really um, Epic fucking resort Right near Really? Um, uh, right on Uluwatu's oh. it Either owns it Or has some sort of affiliation I'm not sure Fact Far check out. that What a life eh Yeah I was wa- watching fr- fr- Watching Instagram clips of, clips of Padang Padang Earlier this week That was just mm. You know the Bali Yeah The wave so good That they named it twice Just like But how cr- <laughs> How crowded It is You know like, I mean yeah. it was just sort of It's one of those ridiculous. It's one of those Surreal Visual Fucking Things to look at though Because it's just lines Coming in man Just like sets Fucking mm. Like just perfect sets Yeah perfect lines Just coming So how, how did they, How would they um, So when, when something like that happens When you're sort of Looking at the surf Because I was never really Technical into the water I just learned how to Fucking stand up on a wave When you're looking at That sort of stuff Like how do they get So perfect would it be would well, it be, like is it a environment or what? Yeah, I don't know. A wave is like I think it was explained to me in primary school or something. So that's how I like it. good my understanding of it will be. But like oscillations in in ocean currents that come from miles and miles, and it's not until they get until shallow enough water that mm. those oscillations then break. And so, like instead of a full circle, it becomes a semicircle, like a wave. Oh, I see. A wave bursts okay. out of the water and yeah, shit. Right. So those oscillations start. Fucking however Somewhere somewhere else That's And they crazy. travel a long long way Swells and stuff mm. Swells yeah. match Direction of swell Match with direction of wind mm. Slash What's on the bottom Is sort of like The, the recipe in it eh? so, it's got so it's so spontaneous That it's mm. not funny That's yeah. it Yeah well it's just natural it's I, se- I always seasonal. wonder um, As like you know A mark of human evolution Or something like that At what point Did we start just you know Playing in the surf and and full grown men like riding waves for fun, like as opposed to no 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 we need to eat we need to fucking mm. you know ha- like work hard to survive and all that sort of shit to the point where we're like yeah no no we we got feeds like let's ride these sticks out here. Mm, yeah. like, I, had a, I had a story about Hawaii, <laughs> Polynesian, yeah, ancient Jew, Polynesians, big Jew Polynesians. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I don't know what era that would have been, but it I want to say seventeenth like, you know, century, maybe eighteenth century. Integrated with. Um, hunting and shit like that to a certain level like you know you're out on boards and shit like that looking yeah. for fish and then you're coming back in you got some fish oh catch this wave back in bro yeah. like yeah. yeah yeah that makes a lot of sense yeah. that does make a lot of sense yeah the, I watched a doco once on um, like part of like the earliest records that they have of humans doing um, artwork and stuff like that and, and participating in art which is essentially something for the sake of nothing sort of thing so, like, the ultimate sign of, like, you know, an advanced species, I suppose, is one that starts creating art. And, um, yeah, I mean, I, w- I wasn't really going anywhere. Yeah, either. no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. like, but, but it's primarily cra- it's is, crazy like, to think about, yeah. riding a wave is an art form. Yeah, mm. yeah. When so we started yeah. just, you know, doing things for the fun of it. Yeah. Mm. And anything, I guess, is an art form if, if you turn it into one. I mean, martial arts is one, golf is one, you know, surfing is one. Totally. You know, yeah. like, it, I mean, really, it really is when you break it down. Yeah. And, that's when, and when you break it down um, and when you really think about breaking it down, it's like understanding why do I love this so much? Mm. So since I was a kid, I've always just I, – I, I couldn't even answer still now why I love it. Mm. I just absolutely obsessed with yeah, it. Yeah, I think there's some really like uh, – you could make some really – interesting parallels between that sort of flow state of sport and and achieving a physical activity in like in a flow state and and meditation and that sort of yeah. mindlessness of of not being you know the outsider looking in not analyzing anything you're actually in the moment you're in, you're it. in the you know in meditation like the om or, or whatever is the the whole thing so it's That's like exactly. for, for a minute you sort of like tune it's like if you're playing a really intense 
rally and squash with your mate or something like that. You, you're not thinking about zone. fucking anything else. Yeah. You're not mm. thinking about, oh, what did argument that I had with such and such a person that day or whatever. You're just in zone. Uh, yeah, it's, mm. I call it the beautiful violence. <laughs> and for me, it's like, the, it's the, I think anyone that doesn't do martial arts, and this is not being hypocritical, I think anyone that doesn't do a form of martial arts is crippling themselves because we eat, we sleep, we fuck, we hunt, you know, um, we drink. I water. don't do no hunting, man. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I don't do no hunting. But as a, as a, as a, yeah, as a as species, a, as a species I suppose. Yeah, yeah. You know, there's it's a few things that we do, and I think that most humans should be able to do those things. Yeah. Mm. That's why we're people that don't do those things are overweight. Yeah. So I look at martial arts as a form of, okay, I'm not in wars anymore. You know, there's no, I don't have to worry about waking up and having fucking. You know, being on a Jackie Chan movie and having mm. like kung fu fighting happen in the backyard like they used to do in ancient China. That was a real thing. So for me, understanding martial arts was a historical thing. And as I got older and I started learning the history of martial arts, I understood the difference between what I need to know today, what's useful, what's relevant, like in a combat situation in the street. Mm. You know, I'm not going to be able to do a lot of the old school kung fu fighting stuff that they used to do. It's so cool to look at and it's amazing to watch. Mm. And it was a good form of self-expression back then. If that was part of their history, their culture, you sort mm. of look at it and go, wow, that's how they used to live. That's but it wasn't used. a real constructive martial but art. It, was, it, wasn't a, it wasn't a modern day constructive. Yeah. It's just evolving, right? Exactly. And if you can't let go of that, I think that you'll always hold yourself back. And so I've sort of taken that mentality towards all my training, whether it's strength conditioning, fitness, martial arts, my nutrition, if you have an open outlook on it mm. and try and go, all right, this could be how something's been for 100 years. But if I just stick in that mindset and go, that's all it's going to be, then I'm holding myself back. And that's on everything. Yeah. So I sort of look at it going, okay, even with movement. So, you know, so many people, even my training I've been criticized about just because everyone thinks, oh, you know, Ido Portel movement, Conor McGregor, flags come up, they do all that sort of shit. I would always think, and as that's someone who's open-minded, would always think, if someone is successful in life, at the pinnacle of probably one of the toughest sports on the planet, should you not just even contemplate... Celebrate that? With not only celebrate it, but no, contemplate why, how, how they're so successful. Look at their routine, look at what they're doing. Look exactly, at yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, so for you to implement that and try it yourself... And Absolutely. ...and see if it works, maybe it won't work and everyone yeah. is so completely different. But if you start implementing those things and adding them to your training and seeing, seeing if am I going to benefit you. from everything? And I'm telling you right now, man, I have, you know, I really got into the movement thing. And at first I was like, mm, a lot of my friends are still like, it's all bullshit. Is it? Like where we move, we move in a certain way. If you can learn how to move in different patterns than what your um, opponent can, is that not going to be easier for you? And he's going to have more trouble figuring you out, mm. even if it's just a random, yeah, even, random pattern. Yeah. No matter how minor getting, they are, yeah, yeah. They, they could be minor, could be minuscule, it could be a thing, it could be a faint, it could be whatever it is. But if you're doing the really weird, abstract stuff that no one normally does, yeah, you may get criticized, but you also have, may have more things in the yeah. bank. Mm. You're strong yeah. in positions, and I think we're not, also yeah. we're also getting so much more um, scientific in the way that we like analyze sporting performance and strength exactly. and conditioning training for particular sporting endeavors. Exactly. So, you know, like the Nick Curson sort of uh, movement is so specific to the fight, to the fight game, to, to a guy who needs to strengthen all of these, you know, like interrelated muscles in the feet and stuff like that, yeah. doing all these sorts of crazy. I follow him on Instagram and like some of the training techniques, he'll have dudes like sitting on the, sitting basically in a chair and getting their, their toes to like, roll up a, a, a flat towel on the ground. So it's like the toes are basically right. just like doing crunches sort he's, of thing. He's, he's real explosive. He's, yeah. he's <laughs> Rafael de Sanjo's striking coach. Yeah. Co- striking uh, coach. Yeah. 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 as well. Yeah. What's yeah. Uh, strength and conditioning. Uh, Nick Curson. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, like, uh, and I think there's, there's something to what you're saying as well about, you know, um, those basic sort of human functions of like, you know, eat, sleep, fuck, fight, sort of thing yeah. and, and and one thing that we sort of really seem to be lacking in you know modern society because we lack conflict and we we lack a reason to really need to have conflict or 
not even conflict, but get yourself into that sort of 100% zone. Yeah. And for me and in my training, um, sprints are like something that I just feel like every now and then it's really good to just go all out. Yeah. To just sort of work up to it, like I'll do maybe a set of ten sprints, right? Yeah, and um, and maybe the first three to four will be sort of 50, 60, 70, 80 percent. Yeah, and then I'll hit like seven sprints at a hundred. Yeah, and by the end of it, I am absolutely Shattered. fucked. I'm like gasping for air. I have this thing that that I call like condom throat. It feels like I've got a a condom in my mouth, and there's only so much oxygen I can get into yeah. my lungs because I'm yeah. so fucking gassed. I, at the I end of hate it. that feeling. It's a horrible oh, feeling. It. It's I a horrible. You know feeling what? i don't I, enjoy it at I all but i get through feeling. it yeah true i thrive yeah. on that never yeah. enjoyed training to that <laughs> level no, but there's something about it, yeah. and, and it and it's something that i can on, only do every now and then like ma- i'm talking like once maybe ma- maximum twice a week um and sometimes i'll take time off from doing it at all but you know you can't you, you, can't you, work, you, like you, day, you work and live yeah. in a modern society and you sort of you don't really get to that 100% mm, yeah. mode very often yeah. you're pretty much always you know you're sitting in the car you're going through the shops you've kind of always got to keep it together around people at the train station you can't be going 100% in any of these places or you, you know you're going to run into strife basically you're a crazy person yeah it's, really so the, it's, uh, it's kind of cool to get out in the field and just go Phew. Just strap. Just flog it. A few of the uh, knockoff nation would know what it's like to have a uh, condom down their neck. We had a couple of boys slide into the uh, <laughs> comments with a couple of love heart emojis on there. Some of our pics and that shit. <laughs> but we ain't mad at you. We'll take any all comers LGBTIQ. We're 100% supportive of that. Like, just thanks for listening, boys. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it. Oh, my that was so funny. I've, that got was a, so I've, funny. I've got a huge connection in that community. Mad. My brother's gay. He yep. just got married um, over in New Zealand. Um, Do that, is it legal over there? Yeah. Yeah, that's oh, mad. Oh, yeah. Yeah. right on. Probably yeah, shout out New Zealand. Recently, yeah. right? Like in the last couple of years, they passed the law? Yeah. 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 And, um, You'd have to think Australia's not far off. No, they, it's just Mate, a really... Australia is there. It's the fucking political party that's not. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. The mentality is one hundred percent there. If, Australia's we're the most progressive country in the yeah. world. We've been if there they put years. it to a vote tomorrow, you reckon it'd get through? Shut in away. a heartbeat, yeah, I reckon. Yeah. If, they, if it was to so. if it was to the nation and the nation said if it was a census type yeah, thing. Yeah. yeah. Bang. For sure. Should yeah. should every be overnight. every be fucking political decision be made by Group consensus. I agree. Apparently. I agree. On things like that, to a that'd be a good way to live. On things as trivial as that, <laughs> yes, definitely, yeah. absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Referendum yeah. type shit. You know, yeah. like yeah. I mean, go, without the, having a referendum, we're ahead on so yeah. many other subjects. People power. Really do you want yeah. it? Do you not? And then we know would know the honest answer fairly simply. Well, like, the crazy yeah. thing is, is, is with the the changing sort of media that we have now in terms of being able to everybody have a phone and everybody be able to do that. If they could figure out the security. Of the platform, they could effectively mass survey, you know, the the entire well, not the entirety of Australia, but the entirety of everyone who had a access to a computer or to a mobile phone or, or whatever to be able to get their opinion on a matter or you mm. know a topic, you know. So I'm yeah. sure they could, man. But yeah, yeah. I guess that's just not how. Uh, but it, as long as it could pa- be corrupted, power structures work. Yeah, yeah exactly. Would. Yeah, it's yeah. sad because um, elected leader to to make all the choices for us. I don't know. Mm. Shout out to uh, Britain. Having their elections today, so I think. Oh yeah, um, that's crazy. My coach has been posting so much. I think shit. it's a. I think it's been an upset. I think the the woman who is currently in called a like a snap election Recently. as a strategy. Yeah, and I, I'm pretty sure she's getting done, but uh, not too up on my um my British politics. But from what I've been reading, because my coach is a Brit, and um, he's a nurse as well, obviously. So you know, and apparently. It would, Works in psychology, so the guy's the guy's brilliant mind. Anyway, obviously, it's very close to his heart because being obvious with all the stuff going with the policing and the nursing and all mm. that sort of stuff. So, um, I've just been seeing all these updates, and yeah, it's fucking crazy over there, man. Man, they're they're almost having yeah. like a, a a revolutionary sort of experience over in Britain. It's pretty wild, man. Like yeah. uh, just the last sort of couple of weeks or whatever they've had those um consecutive incidents there was the ariana grande concert and then which the, which which was and then the london which bridge was fucking horrible london, london bridge was kids. another like um seven. car driving into seven? a car driving into a crowd i'm not sure seven yeah. so so, so well, but you're seeing this shit you seeing this like uh these terror attacks come up on the news like for, for me i'll be at the gym early morning or something like that and there's no volume on the tv but it's like fl- flashing news london bridge attacked it, yeah. and stuff like that it's horrible man and i think 
being being older, I'm sort of like I I'm so skeptical on media. Like I watch media with such a critical so eye. I. But so am I. But um, so so I'm I'm always sort of like, uh, what what are we? We're definitely grabbing my attention here with this. But you know, if I was to look at that through the eyes of an eight year old or something, I'd be like, oh shit, you know, like yeah. flashing lights. L- London Bridge has been attacked. It's like, you know, when you're a kid, fucking London Bridge is falling yeah, down. Yeah, like, yeah. and it's this crazy reality that we're living in of you know terrorism and but they label it that but people it's it's individuals who commit crimes you know and we and, yeah. and that's been the case f- oh, for to a degree man like you got to think that the, the, there's like people like isis and people like al-qaeda who aren't just individuals they're by far a, a majority of or a group that's but we're formed, funded and exactly that are, stuff hide behind the western religion civilization and, you know thrive on intimidation and you know yeah and, and you We've know, like I mean, all that yeah. sort of shit. You know, like I mean, that that that's a, a fucked up situation. That obviously they would have some sort of you know opinion about the West and all that sort of stuff. But no matter which way you look at that, from social rationalization in terms of you know that that's okay to do, no one would look at that. Not even Muslims would look at them and think like have you, you know, like they're doing you know, like they're oh, doing Allah's work or anything no, no. like have that. You of course, not. Ad, radicalization. Have you seen yeah. Uh, yeah. I, th- I don't think it was Saudi Arabia. I lo- uploaded on my Facebook. It's a it's a new um, it's a new ad. I think it's from Saudi. That was an uh, it was it's a I don't know if it was a phone company or it was an ad, and it was an anti terrorism ad, and it was about all these you know people that were from Muslim background that were singing and standing up against this terrorist who was coming out through the, and it was actually it was pretty unreal, man. I uploaded on my Facebook. Um, and it it's very thought provoking. Yeah. Sorry, you know, it makes you think. You know, like I'm judgmental. I'm sorry on every religion. You know, yeah, I, I, I don't believe I in any it. of it. I, I know so, what I'm an atheist. I'm happy to say that, but I'm also happy to go. All right, if you want to believe in something, that's cool, man. Yeah. But don't be killing other people because you believe something. Bingo. Yeah. Exactly. Like I'm yeah. not going to go and kill people because I don't believe in their religion. You don't go and kill me because we don't believe in yours. Mm. Believe in it. That's cool. Yeah. Let, let's all, as a as a species, though, look at look at the the moral sides yeah. of these things. Like Christians aren't acting like Christians used to be. You, let's admit that Christians now aren't acting like they used to be. No, no like I no. mean, and Muslim the the Muslim and Islam is a younger religion. Right. So Islam is actually no. Islam is actually the oldest religion. Um, the Muhammad's the I thought his book the Muhammad was the one uh, it was I'm pretty sure after. Uh, the Islam faith is the isn't oldest it the religion. Quran or something yes, I'm yeah the Quran I thought, I thought the, the, Quran, the holy text I thought the Quran was the third oh, book yeah shit. I'm definitely no theologian we're, 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 yeah. Yeah. we're way out of our depth we're, we're here probably, <laughs> we're, yeah. we're, well boys you will find that like, <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, I'm way too fucking <laughs> stoked <laughs> for that. <laughs> <laughs> The deep fucking rabbit hole at 10.45. We've just fucking destroyed the listeners. They're just like, what? (laughs) Hopefully no Muslims are listening. (laughs) (laughs) We haven't destroyed your religion for you, but with our stupidity. How uh, how my idea of it and my interpretation of it is that there's been a lot of faiths that have now either that don't exist anymore or the ones that have adapted to a modern day context. So... Most Christians or most Catholics, they don't live their life by the book. Nah, fuck most no, no. Christians. I was, I was, bap- I was baptized. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> most Christians that don't live their life like by the book. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Could that child out of wedlock? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and it's safe to say that, like, there's a majority of Muslims that don't live by the book as well. Yeah, they use it for spiritual guidance. Yeah, exactly. And, and the, I, I get that. Like, yeah. I actually, I don't. I'm, I've got no issue with that. It's like, but when you're in our like coming to other countries and you're preaching hate and you're trying to change their way of life when they've taken you in, I I have an issue with that. I welcome any person to any country from anywhere on the planet. If you're a good person. If you're a good person, exactly. I don't give a yeah. fuck. I think that's key. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, totally. There's um totally. Jim Jeffries, the Australian comedian, has a has a bit where he basically says because he's a he's a sort of um, vocal atheist and stuff mm. like that in a lot of his act, and he makes a good point in saying that all religions paraphrased is basically don't be a cunt. Don't be a cunt. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 Like, simplest way to explain yeah. it is yeah. try and be a good person. You know, nobody's talking about 
globalization and and making everyone some some weird mechanical species like feel feel free to you know celebrate whatever um you know traditions that that you will but but i agree with you in that you know the second you start a conflict along those lines since it all it is is a conflict whatever guys you want to hide behind and whatever like ideology you want to call it out it may not be Sol- solely individuals it may be groups but those groups are still somewhat individualized exactly. i think and it's like yeah. you know there, there's it's good and good and bad bad human beings i think is the is the key of it that's exactly yeah. right and any culture in any race uh, all around the world and it, mm. it even happens in the animal kingdom totally in the animal kingdom there's just shit animals mm. you know they just go out and just fuck shit up yeah absolutely. you know what i mean it happens it's just but our species do it and the animal kingdom does it as and, well. and and that's really what we are kind of thing is, yeah. is we just mirror their shit you know like yeah. I mean, we're just animals on our own spinning rock at the end mm. of the day yeah fuck i read this trippy article on the conversation the other day about <laughs> they've actually just discovered the, at this really famous archaeological site in morocco that's like uh basically the where they first found the oldest human uh, remains or uh, hominid. hominid. So like obviously... Uh, it was a cousin. Homo sapien is like one type of hominid and there were there were yeah. several others as well as Neanderthals were the small, and shit. Were the smaller ones? Uh, Homo sapiens? No, the, um, the hominid. Hominid is like the umbrella term for Homo sapiens, Homo blah, blah, Homo... No, like, the ones they found in, um, in this country. They were Homo sapiens. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So the yeah. oldest living Homo sapiens, like what they thought were... Um, they found like I think, and the, and they had carbon dated, carbon dated like maybe a hundred thousand years wow. is how old human human beings wow. were originally thought to be. And they're the only ones they found, and then they found recently they've just made a new discovery, and they're they're dated three hundred thousand years. Really? Yeah, human so, like like. Homo erectus sort of shit. Yeah, homo sapiens. Think about fucking homo sapiens. Species, and they think said about it's com- us before then. And they right. said it's, com- it's completely changed their view of the way of of evolution in terms of we used to think that it was like basically one superseded the other, and it w- and it was only until the Homo sapiens came along that was like you know the ultimate model or whatever that that okay we're good now, but all of these different hominid species actually. Um, Evolved alongside each other, right? So it was right. actually just like you know a process of yeah, you know survival or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But there would have been a whole bunch of different types. So so it would have been like where we're hominids, but I'm a Homo sapien and a human being, and you're something sort of different. Like that that sort of at, that's at when we were proper animal days, yeah. you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's like, you know, yeah. it, it, it's, it's nuts to You weren't th- worried about your mortgage or, yeah. your, or your Instagram appearance fucking... And, every, <laughs> and every, <laughs> everything came from something, you know? Like, it always trips yeah. me out to think that, you know, like the, the cow is effectively an evolutionary progression of a whale, you know, like a, as a sea creature yeah. that, mm. you know, like it started out well, as a we're, sea creature. We're an evolution of um, sea creatures as yeah. well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah, have, you ever, have you ever thought about, um, is a theory about the uh, string theory? <sighs> so alternate, obviously, dimensions and things like that. Yeah, I've never yeah. been able to quite wrap my head around Yeah, it's, cr- so it's a cr- hard concept to wrap your head it around. It is, and I'm a glorified moron. So like, don't quote me on exact things, but mm. it's a mini passion of mine is astrophysics. Um, I'm not smart enough to go and pursue no. a career in it. But space is some cool shit. It's I a love fascination it. I for you. Love yeah. it. And it's probably the one thing that I could sit there and just turn on um, uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson anytime, anywhere. The Cosmos. The Cosmos. That series That's is beast. And you've got to watch that. Smart, sm- smoke two bowls yeah. and trip out. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Put yourself on Allegedly. another planet <laughs> on a widescreen surround sound. You know, yeah. lose yourself. But... um. You know, that's just it's actually a really big passion of mine, yeah. And the string theory obviously is talked about the um alternate universes, so this exact thing's happening, yeah, a billion times over, just yeah. different seconds or different situations or whatever, you know, exactly over and over and over. Yeah, and over. you like say this, I infinity. say something different, yeah, yeah. yeah. So which breaks down the word infinity, and yeah, not many people can wrap their mind no. around that. <laughs> and even just Namely talking, me, yeah. yeah, even just talking about it, it makes you realize. Oh fuck! I don't want to go there. Yeah, it's a deep, it's, it's actually a deep, a sca- deep, it's actually deep a rabbit hole to go down. I went there on, uh, I went there on acid once and nearly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, honestly, I thought I was going to go crazy. I, I really enjoy. I've only ever done it twice, and both times were over overseas. Drops? In, Did you have drops? Though? No, no tabs. Oh, like proper, so like you better. know, like those little paper tabs. Yeah, yeah. Little, drops pa- are the best. little paper, little paper squares. Yeah. 
Um, yeah. Yeah. Did it. Did it twice over. Um, over in the states actually, and um, and but both times like just got the giggles and the sweats hard. First like, time I was the real, giggles. Really, First really time hard. I was the giggles. Second time I. Color changes as well though. Yeah, yeah. I like seeing patterns. Yeah. So the walls just look textured. Everything. Best way to explain it to people that aren't are listening that have never done LSD. <laughs> um, when you look at everything on yeah. acid, it looks like it's breathing. So it's sort of just... Or, or moving, moving or sliding just, or, just, you know, like rotating yeah. or, yeah. It's just like patterns just move and flow and yeah. everything around you. Especially if you stop to stare at it. Yeah. You know, like if you... Don't the, look in a mirror. The walls of this... Don't look in a mirror. Yeah, the walls of this studio are like vertical lines and if you mm. looked at it, they'd all just start like getting real sweaty. geometric more. shit between yeah, them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. How far have you so gone? How far have you gone? So I do, like I'll, I'll, I'll give away a little secret tonight. Um, What's the deepest you've ever gone on psychedelics? Let's have that. Let's have that story from everybody. So once a year, um, I haven't been for a couple of years. My new missus, obviously, I was sort of everything's really good. But to unplug from the world, once a year, I used to go away to the place of Mulaney. It's a cabin. I'd go by myself for two days or two and a half days. Um, I'd pop myself full of LSD. Start a bonfire and just get amongst nature on my own. Turn what, my phone what, off. Well, I've never had LSD. What is it like? It's, it's a, like a liquid or something. It's is a liquid. It? Yeah, right. It's same okay. thing as acid. Yeah. So, yeah. But it's pure. It's got none of the other shit. Right. It's just straight LSD. Super popular in the 70s. Much cleaner. Super popular. Much in cleaner. The 70s. Much more euphoric. Um, more of a mind fuck. Right. Um, the, I find the tab sometimes it's a lucky dip. Right. You know, you, could get too much, you could not get enough. Yeah, you know, LSD, yeah. At least you know what you, how much drops you're having. Yeah. Sort of what drops. about you? What do you reckon is the deepest you've ever been on psychedelics? Um, a trip that I'll talk about is the um, uh, a mushroom trip I actually had in um, Spain, and um, and I guess in terms of the trip itself, I was laying in a bed and um, and I was sort of. I was going on this sort of crazy journey of, of thinking of all this different stuff and, and, you know, going through aspects of my life and thinking of them with a completely different perspective. And I remember I eventually got to this point where I was visualizing all of the different ways in which that I could die. And it was like, yeah. you know, me d- falling off a cliff or then there's doctors telling me cancer and it's like the the echoing of cancer is in is in this trip and stuff and at one point i'm sliding down a vine that's like full of thorns and the and the vine's completely wow. tearing me to oh, shreds and stuff wow. like this like it's almost a dark trip yeah, basically dark being trip, like yeah. ripped apart but it was this feeling of it was actually a positive thing it was this feeling of release of this acceptance of like what is the worst possible scenario that that could happen to you in this life and then accepting that and then being like okay well it's it's a beautiful thing that we're wow, here you know trippy, like trippy. it was it, it gets was pretty deep point. Yeah. it gets yeah. to that point my um when i went away for a couple of days and i used to do it once a year so the same guy would go and rent the cabin off he had four cabins there and he knew he always sort of knew that i sort of went there to seclude myself um he was a really nice old gentleman his wife passed away and they had this business together and so he, he was sort of living through it um, and he was a very nice guy. Um, I won't plug his business because I'm talking about drugs. Um, <laughs> but plug you your know. drug dealer, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, cuts, he cuts a snippet for his, AB, yeah. his like <laughs> FM radio <laughs> <laughs> advertisement. Shout out, Ronnie. You've been oh, a great bloke. Ronnie. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I'd go to this place once a year and like I'd take for two – for two and a half days, so I'd be I wouldn't sleep, so I'd dose myself for two and a half days. Normally, I'd go on LSD, yeah, and for I'd, two days, and I'd fast on your own, yeah, yeah, fuck, yeah. and I'd have a bonfire, and I'd take right. my essentials out there, and I'd get like I got stuck in the um, I went down, I was hundred meters away from my cabin, right, right, but I was stuck in the no, spot for seven d- hours. Didn't even take a spotter or anything for that shit. No, no, fuck, no, me. you go, you go, and you, you lose yourself, yeah, wow. And so um, I remember what, probably one of the, the funniest experiences of, and I was just coming down off a really heavy trip. So I had some really, um, I had, yeah, I had some really sort of full on experiences about it. I was sort of like, I was going through some shit and, you know, it was a pretty dark trip and I sort of come out of it and I had a big bonfire out outside the cabin. And I was sitting out there in my undies. I was just sitting in my jocks in the middle of, a, like, it wasn't winter, so it wasn't that cold, but there was a big bonfire. Anyway. Mm, yeah. And I was just staring at the fire. And um, I had my, I had like a cube little speaker. Yeah. So I just had some tunes on there and I was just sort of in my little zone. 
I didn't even realize I was doing it at the time. So I stood up. I was standing up near the fire and um, I was rocking. Like I was like, first I was sort of feeling the fire and then I started dancing. So I was dancing pretty much like at the fire in my jocks. Oh, shit. That's dangerous. Well, it, it wasn't dangerous. It was just weird. So yeah. the guy, the guy comes yeah, down. I'm like, I'm having visions yeah. of Ronnie looking at his kitchen window yeah, like, so. what the fuck is Josie doing down there? Like, so I think he was just really coming. Lit. I think he was coming down to check because the fire was on. Yep. And he came down the ute and I was like in my jocks staring at this fire after coming off a heavy trip. Hey, oh, wait. And he, was, <laughs> he, was, he come down, he goes, he got out. I remember him looking at me going, are you okay? Yeah. I'm all good, mate. Yeah, I'm great. All right. Yeah. Well, uh, yell out if you need anything. I'm just checking on you. Yeah. All right. Okay. He drives off. I was like, oh, what a nice guy. Yeah. The next day I was thinking, oh, he would have been seeing me from his house going, what is this guy doing? Yeah. <laughs> is this guy on drugs? Yeah. And he yeah. would have come down and realized it. Then he would have come down and realized, yes, yeah. this Took guy is look at you like, oh, shit. Uh, Take a sort of, one look. So sort of uh, yep. just checking on me. <laughs> Confirmed. This yeah. right, <laughs> is right, yes, fucked up. <laughs> oh, definitely. Definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he was, still, he was still a nice guy the next uh, morning. Really, so, but I think he would, he, he would have known. Yeah. And oh, I, I used to do that often sure. just to unplug. Just to sort of fucking far out. That's a fuck. crazy story. What yeah. about what about you, Bruce? What do you reckon? To your uh, your probably your heaviest psychedelic. Like the couple of shroom experiences I've had have all been good, and I've, I've yeah. thoroughly enjoyed all of them. But back in the in the day, I'm probably like eighteen, nineteen on a uh, trip to see, like oh, going yuck. going out and taking a bill. And I remember being told like. Uh, <laughs> yuck. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, dead set, yeah, dead set, man. Sure. I, I remember being told like, yeah, it'd be. Take, take it easy, boys. Like, and this is probably from like an older contact who was 24, 23, 24 at the time. Like, look, you guys are green. You're going out. You're keen on that shit. Like, experimental phase of our lives yeah. and shit. Like, all, all been there. Like, yeah, sock it to me sort of thing. What do you got? Got, got it to like 4 a.m. And we're like, I'd sort of come on and off. Like, get maybe like a bit of that sort of like nice MDMA feel. Like, yeah, no, nah, th- th- this is okay. Go, I'm like, no, nah, I'm not, not really feeling anything trip-wise. Like, it feels like an okay pill. Fucking cru- cruising in a, uh, a cab home, go back and lay in bed. And that's when the psychedelic, like, part right. of this trip began, man. Oh, wow. And uh, living at uh, my parents' place at the time as well. So, like... Didn't help. Go, yeah, just <laughs> coming up the stairs, <laughs> like... The worst. Go into the room, lay, the lay down like shit, it's bedtime. I obviously can't be seen now. Like, it yeah, yeah. will look absolutely fucked. <laughs> and uh, looking up into the blinds, like, as the sunrise is coming, it looked like a... Uh, Bunch of like roulette tables and shit like up in the window, like lots of lights and shit like that. Wow. Like like I was in some sort of casino, like in my own bedroom, man. And it was in the in the time when like the television show Lost was on. And uh hand on oh. heart, man, the uh the black guy from Lost, like in his like full lost kit, was like sitting in the corner of the room, like wow. like like wow. S- saw him in, in a vision, like playing his date yeah. and was talking. And to the point where mum and dad were like, when I'd come uh like come out of my bedroom at say like three o'clock in that afternoon, were like Oh shit! We thought you had someone back. Like you were talking, like Ooh, in that yeah. room, and not really remembering what I was saying or anything. Like, yeah. like oh, shit. just like, really, really. I was like, yeah, I was, I was on the phone. Like, oh fuck! Wow, yeah, yeah. wow. it's incredible how long we've we've been doing that though. For you know, like intoxicating the mind and well, trypsy. W- whether you want to <laughs> call it like, yeah, maybe not particularly. Da- Danny, 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 Danny's been how long we've been doing trypsy, man. Dan- 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 Danny's <laughs> been doing it from uh, eighteen to twenty nine. <laughs> <laughs> Solid every weekend. <laughs> <laughs> Help but, an ox. <laughs> but like, it's it's just crazy that all of these things like it, it used to exist, well, still do, and and exist in nature that you can change the you know chemistry of the brain or whatever it yeah. is. You know, somebody more intelligent would be able to explain it better. But it's just um, it's just so crazy the sort of different level of consciousness that a that a human oh, yeah. brain can get to. Whether you want to quantify it as consciousness or not is, is a, a whole. Well, other that, that's thing, exactly what it is. You just not hit the nail on the head. Is it's just changing the chemistry of the brain. You know, yeah. like I mean, you are, you know, chemistry being, you know, like I mean, chemicals and stuff like that, and that's exactly what you're doing. You yeah. know, you're introducing <laughs> those to yeah. Absolutely. Have you guys? Have you guys? Uh, do you know much about DMT? Uh, yeah, man. Like, oh, oh, no, never, never done it. I, I definitely do the ayahuasca experience. I've been to South America, haven't done ayahuasca when I was there, but um, I've even toyed with the idea of uh, 
anybody that is not in the know about DMT, it's like this um, dihypyl trypamine or whatever, which is like a um, a derivative of a plant that you can get in Australia called an acacia. Oh, there's about a thousand plants in it. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But one of the one of the highest concentrations of plant that actually plant. has this is the acacia plant, which is actually native to Australia and yeah. um, and Africa, but um, but certainly Australia as well. It's one of a, a really common plant we have here. So I've thought about doing the process to do it, but um, I'd prefer to just someone to give it to me. Yeah, yeah so X, they... X nay on that uh, mass production chat there. Oh, God. <laughs> 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 so uh, I'm thinking about producing it in yeah. mass quantities because <laughs> I know the plants. They're playing this back in court. You're just yeah. like, uh, yeah, i got no defence. Yeah, 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 I was yeah. fucked up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Plead the fifth. Yeah, look, look, man, we smoked two joints uh, during, during yeah. the <laughs> <laughs> we, can't, we can't be able to sponsor all. Uh, we got some from uh, Nimbin. Nice. Yeah. Um, the, the smoking variety or the... the no, you get the crystal form. If yeah, you know, it, yeah, yeah, the, yeah. Like everyone says, oh, I've had the good experience of that. You haven't had shit until yeah, you've had the crystal stuff. True. And like you just sprinkle it on a ciggy? Um, or you put it in like a... a no, a, you're not a, supposed to directly burn it. It no, should not. be vaporized. Right. Um I'm not going to explain the heating process because yeah, it sounds really sounds gross. Dirty, I'm yeah. not going to tell anyone. Yeah. Full, I bet you put it in an ice pipe, don't you? No. No, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Possibly. No. No. No, 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 no. Possibly not. <laughs> yeah, possibly not. But anyway, it tastes like it tastes like burnt rubber. Yeah, right. It's horrible. Um, rock city, I'll bet though, like from yeah, yeah, all, proper, all reports. Proper yeah, rock. Like it's um and it's Technically, in in a lot of things in Australia, so it's, it's legal but not illegal. Mm. Yeah, I don't think, I don't yeah, think there's I've, any r- laws around. No, it it's in illegal Australia. to have it or right. create it. Okay, but if you got caught with it, I don't think you would be in trouble. Yeah, it's, like, it's yeah. hard there, to. There's, there's a caveat to that. Um, that um, I won't I won't name any names, but sort of like a friend of a friend of the the podcast actually uh, allegedly anyway. I don't know this bloke, but just through through reports was you know. Um, he was actually working as an actor and, you know, doing extra work and stuff like that and basically tried DMT and um, and never came sort of good again and, and basically I'm not sure what sort of diagnosed condition that he had following that but he was a shadow of his right, wrong self sort of true. thing. So it's one of those type of ones where you can go on a trip and but, never come back. But, but so, cannabis is like that. For some people, cannabis, oh, cannabis yeah, is has like not some level, though. predisposition yeah. with um, schizophrenia. Right, it changed my life. Um, yeah, but I'm pretty a, sure it's yeah. not a. It's not like a social thing you do. No, no. not at it's like slightest. It, you got to understand that it could potentially change the way you think about your yeah, life. Yeah, they they mm. say that they say that, and they try. They say it should find you. Yeah, you should not go and seek it out. Would Would you do the whole uh, ayahuasca thing or? No, nah, because I've done DMT, which is smoking just as variety. Yeah, it's just exactly. As intense and you but just but shorter. And yeah, shorter. Yeah. Way way. You don't shorter. want it. You don't because the ayahuasca. I know guys that have gone and done it. Ayahuasca, and they said that you know eight hours of yeah, shooting your pants and vomiting. Tripping, yeah. Yeah. So it's different. That purging thing to me sounds yeah. like the annoying bit. Oh, <laughs> definitely, <laughs> maybe. Yeah, yeah. That eight hours of hurt. Yeah, like. well, actually, man, the purging sound quite good to me. Yeah, man. exactly. <laughs> Tobacco session and shit too. Like someone really intense durries oh, getting man. blown all over you. They do that in really uh, two days before. Think yeah. of the, yeah. the, the worst yeah. sort of Dan Hardy. Really? Dan yeah. Hardy, man, he'd uh, he'd yeah. done a ceremony like that before, and he'd. Uh, Survive like the tobacco you ritual. Eat, you got to yeah. eat like raw foods for a week and shit. Mm. If you're gonna, yeah. do it. he said a lot of people who b- rock up and uh, would battle because they're like, Americans, Australians, whatever, used to eating whatever they like. Where Dan said he went through the purge of was okay because he was eating really, really clean before right. he got there. Where he saw other people going to hell and back like through yeah. this tobacco ceremony, just constant uh, right. Think like constant Hardy durries. Yeah. B- Durries burning and like cigarettes being blown all over you and shit yeah. like that. So, oh, I met this um break. I met this dude in um Nicaragua who was like a yoga instructor and like really fucking speaking of movement, this guy just like he was just one of those, you know, genetic freaks that he could just do handstands, handstand push ups and just great, great movement. And and like this guy obviously like took care of himself, trained, eat, ate well and stuff like that. And he did it and he didn't have any of the um the purging either but he had a real bad time he said because um they basically did it out in this camp and 
for whatever reason, I don't know if it was something to do with the ayahuasca, but he got especially mauled by mosquitoes. And then so his whole trip just became this really like intense mosquito attack experience and shit. And he was just really like agitated the whole time and stuff. But he then sort of like days later, he started to speak of, you know, positive effects that he felt he was having from it and the, stuff. Well, they, and they talk about that the effects are pretty much like, you know, take weeks to materialise yeah, and, yeah. and the realisation sometimes take months, you mm. know. like I mean, is, is you have the session and it's not like you get everything that you're supposed to get out of that one session, you know, like you sort of get things progressively as, as time goes on after it. But exactly like Joe, as you said, it, it, it's a really confronting sort of idea to think about that you're going to go into something that might change the way that you think about mm. everything in general, you know, indefinitely, you know, and and you hope that's for the better, but it might be for the worse, yeah, you know. I not mean, necessarily. You, yeah. yeah, like, I mean, you, you, a lot of people would probably go in running away from something or wanting that change, you know, but having said, having never done it, you know, I mean, I, I guess I don't know. There's guys like Aubrey Marcus who have done it a lot, who seem to have their shit together. So, you know, I'm sure that that sort of inspires a lot of people that don't have their shit together to do it. Yeah, I think, I don't know, I always feel there's a certain um, danger in that. Like, you know, when somebody who the drug obviously reacts well with is very, you know, vocal and and, and sort of talks about the positive aspects Mm. of something and then I guess, you know, you can't really bubble wrap the whole world but Mm. in terms of... It do, it's it's not for everybody, you know. Some th- some things just fucking order. send it's people the complete other way. Like you're saying, it can be positive, or it could it could send somebody on a trip that never comes back. I, the first time I did, I woke up and I was in tears. Yeah, right. It One of my like, mates cried on mushrooms. Yeah, yeah. It was, uh, oh yeah, but it's, it's not even the same experience as mushies, man. It's yeah. like times that by infinity. Yeah, that's what they say. That's and what they it, say. It feels like you're gone for years. And you're gone for like 15 minutes. Yeah, exactly. I think the first That's time I was actually only gone for 11 minutes. They timed it and um, a mate of mine gave it to me. And, and are you laying down at the time? At the like, and you're just laying down, of, just fucking at, twitching and shit? I was shit, at the beach like, with a bunch of hippies. Right. Yeah, I ran into these dudes and befriended them and then ended up getting high with them. And then No, but when, when you've taken the hit like and, and it obviously Some like people move o- around. overwhelms you. Some people you. move around. But really? You should, like the way, you, the way you should do it is, is you should lay down. And if yeah. you've done enough... You won't be moving around. No, like, exactly. Oh, like, I can't imagine. I, I don't didn't visualize it as something that you'd be standing up. You got to take like for. three or four big breaths. Yeah. Um, if you just do like one, one puff and yeah. sort of hold it in, you got to hold it in for as long as you can, and then you blow it out. And then the second one, you blow it out. Most people back off about two. They go fucking oh, oath. Yeah, I'd oh. be backing off it too. And they're sort of looking around. They're seeing the patterns and shit. And just going on oh, that. Nah. And then. Three, if you want to cross over, you go four. Mm. And when I say cross over, you, you do cross over. Far like, out. Oh, like yeah. I sunk into the sand and watched myself come out of my body. Yeah. Some yeah, Rogan always talks about like getting to the door and taking a peek. You know, like people that have, a, have a couple you of You can't ID on it. You know, you, you just... can't ID on it. Really? No, you oh. can't because the brain produces it. You can't ID on it. Yeah. So you just... Fuck, if you're going to do it, do it properly, Exa- man. That's what he says. He's like, don't do don't just get to the door and have a peek. Like, go all the way in. You know? Yeah. Like, I mean, go and all the way in. get something out of it. Yeah, exactly. I yeah. come out of it. I had these messages from whatever this thing was communicating with me. I don't even know what it was, but it was something. And it was giving me the messages about how uh, mankind are going in the wrong way at the moment. So with science and spirituality, we should be merging. But right now we're going spirituality and science in the opposite ways. This was your realisation at the time. That's the messages I got from yeah, this Yeah, right. And um, that mankind was going to destroy itself again because we've done it a number of times mm. because spirituality and science don't meet. So they don't go, all right, well, we're talking... And I'm not, I don't mean spiritually by religious sort of sense. I mean like a former part of evolution, like consciousness sort of. Mm. Where do we go with our minds next? And it's almost like science and technology and spirituality yeah, emerge, and then that's yeah. how we're supposed to move forward. But it was like a, this message that we will go in the opposite direction. Trippy, trippy. And I woke up just in tears because 
one, it was so overwhelming what I actually just experienced. Yeah. And two, I was like, oh, that's really sad. It's pretty much just told me that they're yeah. only going to destroy themselves. Far out. That that neurochemistry that we were talking about before, it's some incredible shit that, you know, like that there's the, the big arguments that surround all those sort of, you know, psychedelics as to whether it is just the you know, the alteration of your neurochemistry in terms of the compounds that you're taking which have that causal effect or, or whether was it a legit crossover. Exactly, or was mm. it a legit experience that you had with a, a spiritual dimension yeah. and, you know, and all that sort of I stuff. I think it's that. Look, I'm a, I'm a very factual person. I'm very science-based. I, I want evidence on everything. But when you, when you do something like DMT... You, you feel it. You, you feel it. I'm yeah, sure. You can't sure. have that. You can't just go. Oh, okay. That was just my brain doing that. No fucking way, man. Mm. It's not just your brain doing yeah, that because I've had so many people that I've met that have had similar experience with some being, some extraterrestrial. Yeah, sort of, that's what they talk some about. Some force or whatever it is. Mine was. I could. See, I couldn't. I couldn't look at it straight on. It was mm. in my peripherals. Every time I kept trying to look at it, it was in my peripherals. But it was almost this tall being. It was feminine looking. And it had just eyes, no mouth, no nothing, just eyes. And it was a feminine looking being. And it was giving me these messages. Really but I couldn't look at trippy. it. I couldn't, like, I couldn't draw you a picture, but I yeah. could sort of see it in my peripheral. It's like dreams sort of, you know, you sometimes have dreams where you, you, someone doesn't look like the person that you know that they are, but you know that they are. Yeah. Them. yeah. Well, oh. people morph in dreams yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's the dreamscape is such a fucking crazy mm. one, man. Like you go to some some depths and some tangents that you could never even think of in your normal waking life. That's why DMT is so confronting is because it sends you in that dream state. And, and dimethyltryptamine is basically the dream chemical, right? Yep. So that's so what produces your in gland. your sleep that you... When, um, when you, you die, dream. when you're first born, a, body, a whole bunch of it gets released. When you die... It all gets released, and when you dream, it gets released. Br- Briss was yeah. telling us this story about Steve Jobs. Yeah, his was his last words in looking up. Oh wow! Oh wow! Wow! And just fade to black. Because like, so he, he, the last bit of that was just getting excreted from his body on his deathbed. Did like, he get injected, or did he smoke no, it, or do, no? What? No, that, that's you passing away. Like that's it's it, the natural product that causes you that dream right. state is like the last excretion. So. <laughs> Just a full on light. We've talked about it on the podcast. Steve before. Jobs huffing a bowl just before yeah, yeah. As he went out. Oh, that, that. Time to get <laughs> lit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. okay, just like, oh, wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, oh, fuck you. Oh, wow. wow. I'm actually going to die. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, the DMT is loud. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, what? So, what is, <laughs> <laughs> so, so DMT <laughs> is real loud. Man. So, what? Is, so, what did he, That was what he said. Yeah, man. Yeah, he's like, sort of one last sort of. Passing statement, and that's what was, I was. Oh wow! Even, uh, oh wow! Yeah, <laughs> oh wow! Le- legitimately was. <laughs> wow! Oh wow! Yeah, yeah, just at, fully able to fact check that. Like he's um, it's one of those things. I think we've even like touched on it maybe on the podcast before. Where yeah, I think if I people in sort of like story. a. Car accident fatality, or we're looking at a like jumping off a building or something like that. Whether that you don't feel human it. being still experiences that trip, even if not only for a split second, like yeah. is there somehow that realization where it's like, oh, that's it. Whether it does it, or you know, Jobsy laying on his on his deathbed, yeah. there is able to actually sort of be present in a hospital room and take that last breath yeah. to pass away yeah. in a more timely manner. You know, what do you reckon? What do you reckon happens? Uh, I, I think it might be. Opinion. Um, from no, yeah, no humble opinion, fucking yeah, yeah, oath, like, yeah, um, is maybe of a, a, a very split second of like realization, sort of thing. Yeah, where if, what about it, when it, you go? Um, it would be interesting because I've been present in the room when I've seen a person take their last breath, like, I was present for where my grandfather was, yeah, and I still right. treasure it as one of like the I don't see it as a negative thing at all. Like, yeah. we were, my mother and I were there with him, and yeah. like, t- took his last breath, like, and he would have had that experience like for yeah, sure as well yeah. to see him there like to transition. Yeah. But I think he, he would have, just, would have had it in a more timely manner where someone in like the, the car accident or something really quick might have it for even, in, even just a millisecond. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. I'd like to fact check that. I mean, that'd be fascinating. But, oh, you know, absolutely. Yeah. Well, that, we talked the, about one time. Or whatever. <clears throat> yeah. So, yeah. We talked about one time, um, <coughs> excuse me, the, um, Footage that you saw of people basically throwing themselves out of the the twin towers when the when oh, the planes hit or whatever, and um, and how you know how 
you think your mind would be able to rationalise that situation of hurtling towards the ground out of that building in that mm. so under those circumstances, and it would re- and it would really come down to like how able you were to be willing to die. I suppose mm. like you could you could have this incredibly euphoric experience yeah. of flying. Well, see, I, I through, think you would. You'd, through you might have that last like, excretion. Okay, yeah. thank you so much for all of the love and and life that I've had. Good I don't night. Know if I would. Or, or would you go screaming terrified down to the I bottom to the last second I lights out? I would be so fucking scared that I'm just jumping out of a burning building and yeah. this is my this is it. Yeah, I, I wonder if the Dalai would... if the Dalai Lama like had to throw himself out of that building if he'd. What would he have done? Mm. What would you have if done? he would have accepted what would you it? Have done? Would you stay in the building? I, or I would have jumped. You know, I would have jumped for sure. Yeah, at least you know. Like, I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah. if you, if you currently got flames on your back, yeah, you want you want to go fast. You don't want to go slow. You yeah. know, like I mean, so you, you're gonna have a go. You yeah. would, and, and in those circumstances, I think, like, you would know, you jump? Would you do like a running leap, or how <laughs> would you? How would you go? I'd do a double yeah. somersault. Well, pike. Yeah. Would you, you, need, would you, you need to bust through that. the window, right? I guess if you smash the window open with a chair first, yeah, I a lot think of those windows would have been broken. A lot of those windows would have been Yeah, I think. I think. But would you dive or would you jump? Full, full backy. No, I actually, reckon, that's really no, disrespectful. No, 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 no I don't. Oh, I yeah, don't no, mean yeah. it in that way. But like I'm saying, if you were, if you were to lodge, if you were to go, okay, I'm going to jump out. I'm going to Superman gonna go, dive. That sort would of you thing. go forward or would you go like feet first and sort of? Yeah, I don't know. Feet. Just I don't like know. I think cliff diving, go feet. Mm, I think yeah, there's potential that you could be overcome with the sense of, um, like, or just almost. I couldn't like, imagine that feeling. I couldn't. I'm trying to now. But if you were like, if you got to the point where you were, yeah, we're so fucking deep here, man. We're so deep. (laughs) We're at like beyond a Rogan length here and shit. (laughs) That's what's up. Yeah, fuck me, man. Yeah, I've got a spare gigabyte. Like we don't crop these files down too small. (laughs) (laughs) I would, on your Wi-Fi. Anyway, what all I was going to say is that I would like to think that I would like in a situation of a plane crash or you know one of those ones where it's like there's probably I don't know twenty twenty to thirty seconds of how are you going to accept your death because you've you've just found out that that it's Mm. that it's imminent. And um, I would like to think that I would be able to spend those last moments in in a state of gratitude and peace and try try and go out like that. But the the reality is probably the you know um, scary aspects of those exactly. that situation would yeah. overcome. Uh, fear, f- what what fear. is it? Fear, flight, or freeze, or whatever. Like uh, no fright, flight, or freeze fright. is pretty much like the yeah. three options flight that you've got. Yeah, like. yeah, that's intense, man. That's a um. Yeah, that's actually a really confronting. Oh, definitely. To I just mean, go, uh, have you guys have you guys seen the documentary of the um, the uh, Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco, where people just uh, they d- do the time lapse photography of the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco for twelve months, and just the amount of suicides. Uh, I think I might have seen. Yeah, yeah how many of them? Oh, oh, it's hundreds, but like, um, but it, it's just literally, you know, like this collage that they put together of like you know, one and two minute clips of just people sort of like climbing over the rail. Mm. They're just sort of standing there and then like, boop, you know, like, I mean, yeah. they're just gone. And they show it. There's yeah. another one. Oh, they show, they show it. One after it's, the it's other so far, after the it's other. It's so far away that it's other. like nondescript in terms of people's faces and stuff like that. Yeah, it's exactly. just like a black dot. It's, oh, it's hundreds of metres away, but it's still right. like, you know, like it's still a, a fairly clear picture. There's, of, another, you know, um, there's another vice doco called like the Japanese Suicide Forest or something like that yeah, about I've, this well, forest in Japan. To, so where, Japan's yeah. a big interest of mine, man. I where, someone where want to go and of, visit. Yeah, where a lot of people um, go and, go and kill suicide. themselves. But it's actually interesting. I did like one unit when I was at uni of so sociology and and part of it was um there's a lot of like sociological study around suicide and Mm. sort of this the societal trends that dictate people from different geographical locations and the traditions or processes in which they they go through doing doing suicide so that's like you know from the method to whether they leave notes or not like and and it Based down to psychology. You, you can kind of categorise it by, okay, people in France have traditionally tend to throw themselves in front of buses and write notes before they go. People in, um, really? you know, yeah, Asi- wow. Asian backgrounds do, do it this way. And it's, again, yeah, it's, 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 that, it's, yeah. it's that sort of, you know, that social aspect of the human The Japanese human are the animal. most dramatic when they take their lives. I mean, you the just got to look at the samurais. Yeah. 
the Japanese looked at death as beauty. That was like a, yeah, that was like a, a stoic, uh, an act of stoicism yeah. sort of thing. It, rather than be killed at the enemy's hands, you would yeah. fall on your own, own sword. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, kamikaze, same sort of like thing with yeah, like and the, the pilots and that. Yeah, yeah shit. The Japanese, yeah. man, you, they don't fuck around when it comes to Yeah, death. suicide bombers are nothing new. Like, yeah. you know, yeah. people yeah. have been doing kamikaze missions for a long, long time. Yeah, yeah and I, I probably even believe that it was probably the Japanese that were first. I'd say kamikaze. Yeah, yeah. Who sure. knows? Who knows? I'm yeah. sure back in in you know hominid days, we were fucking somebody was putting themselves out on the line. Yeah, taking the ball yeah, up. It's always been. It's always been something that humans do. Running straight. Yeah, like Qu- Queensland in game two. Yeah, maybe. Maybe come, we coming. We coming. We coming, mate. Sword. We yeah. coming, mate. Bryce is a um, blues, Bryce is a staunch blues oh, supporter. Yeah. So. Where were you yeah. born? Uh, New South Wales. That's, yeah, that's, that's the uh, uh, Green Acre Private Hospital. You'd have been yeah, stoked no. with that first one, mate. I was, man. I was. It's been, been a lot of hurt. And I, I, hey, I, I, hey, it was a good game of footy. It was. It was, it was a good first game of half. Footy. Yeah. That, uh, that, yeah. that first half, that first was half like eighteen of eighteen sets and eighteen of nineteen sets for both teams. Like, it's yeah, just the ball was in game. play so fucking much. Yeah. It, was, it was epic. But I think it'd be a close one in the second. But we got Thursday. Yeah, he back. They'll pick Billy as well. Yeah, this game. Yeah. I think. I reckon it's. I think a, it's the Fords we're ta- lacking. It's a tactic that Queensland tend to do. We sort of last minute will release just to fuck with his. Well, yeah. everybody remembers when Wayne Bennett made the call up to Alfie out of Alfie. retirement yeah. to come yeah. out, scored a little fucking dash Cheeky over try. try. Yeah, and that was one it too. Yeah, that was some storyline shit yeah, right there. Definitely. Wayne Bennett, great, right. is a beast. The best. <laughs> Rugby league coach on the planet, absolutely, and you can't deny undeniable. That. It's pretty like, much the guy. Him, him and Bellamy are yeah. pretty much like Bellamy's the two, two, there, right? two yeah. best yeah. ever. Yeah. Oh, he was his protege, though. Bruce? He was the of coaching. <laughs> I, I see. I wasn't around in like the year of like Jack Gibson and <clears throat> shit like that. Yeah, but Bellamy was know, the protege. Uh, yeah, he was the protege to Wayne. But a bloke you hear a lot about too, and Andrew Johns backs him as like one of the best coaches. Was Warren Ryan at Newcastle when he was there? He goes, he just had an advanced rugby league brain for the time, like right, yeah. So yeah. and he pr- just sort of too old old to coach now and wouldn't commit to it. But yeah, there's different rugby league brains out there now. But I, I go for the Dragons. So Wayne won my team a premiership, man. So I, I got yeah. nothing but love for him. He's yeah. the only premiership I've seen them win in my life. So I got a lot of respect on, for the guy. My yeah. my little cousin plays with Broncos. Tom Opechek. Um Shout out Tom. Yeah, he yeah. just had bad some bad shoulders, so I think he's back playing. Cup for a bit, and then um, well, he's only young; he's early twenties, mate. So they got to give him some time to grow. Yeah, right him. on. But he, yeah, he's a little freak, mate. He's awesome. He's unreal. He played some really good games for the Bronx, and he sort of got my love back for the game. Sort of. You 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 right. you're a Bronx supporter yourself? Yeah, because uh, I played footy with Jack Reed and um, Matt Gillette and those boys. And, nice, uh, nice. You know, I'm just, friends with uh, Matt's older brother Scott. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I don't know yeah. Scott, but I sort of played. Um, at Wests for a bit with those boys and um, right on. <laughs> spent a lot of years with them and they're just honestly Jillo and Reedy were the same when they played for the Bronx and where they were you know they're just good fellas yeah they're no. good fellas they didn't change man the media not, none of that they were just they good dudes so I'll always naturally just support the Bronx because I know a lot of the dudes you fucking know. Good, yep. good fellas good team man they um they got a good mentality there and Brizzy fuck I'm a Brizzy boy we're yeah good. right Brizzy. on man yeah. Briz- Brisbane all the way yeah. Wavell yeah, way oh. yeah, yeah. Get real specific. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Four zero one two will get oh. fucked. No? Yeah. <laughs> he went. He went to high school there. We live there, and we we might actually wrap it there, yeah. even folks. So yeah, um, yeah. you know, like yeah. it, it's been it's been a good head out. Like Josie, Mate. thank you very much for coming on, brother. Mate, it's been a really us, really really good conversation. We've enjoyed it thoroughly. It's been great. Yeah, open invitation, mate. We really appreciate you coming on. And uh, we got plenty more of this coming at you. So stay tuned in the following weeks. We'll try to keep them coming as consistent as this. And uh, thanks again, brother. We'll see you again soon. Thanks, fellas. Cheers. Peace. Nah.